you doing Instagram and Facebook. This is Coach Derek, and I'm here with my co-host Manny Fresh. What it do? We got a special guest in here this evening or this morning. This morning, yeah. This Saturday morning. Good morning, everyone. We have Juan Escutia, Escutia, owner and founder of Third Row Boxing. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you coming in this morning. No, thank you for having us. I've uh. I wanted to reach out to this guy, and, and uh, I know he's busy just from watching from the outside. But the first season, I wanted to get him in here. I, and so when Coach Hammond said, made that mess, I said, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let him come in, man. Yeah, shout out to uh, Coach uh, Hammond Martinez for uh, getting together. Now, I, I first became uh, a well of wine in, in 2008 when I opened the gym and uh, called it the Shamrock Boxing Club. Uh, <clears throat> in uh, Stafford, right around the corner from the old uh, Mo City boxing gym, not far. And uh, he sent me a care package in the mail. I said, man, who's this guy? This guy is all right. And then I seen him. I see him at every show, all the uh, big tournaments. Would you say consistency is your, is your maneuver? Absolutely. <laughs> Everything from the way I dress to, to how I operate. Consistency, man. I, I gotta say, he's he's got to be one of the most consistent guys in boxing here in Houston. But I know you all over, you all over the world. Huh? Concentrated in, in Texas as far as shows, but now with the gyms, uh, you know, we've expanded to other countries. So, how long have you been in business? I started in uh, 2001. In 2001, oh, yes, sir. 20, 20 years, years wow. yes, sir. Yeah. Let's, let's get a little. Uh, History for uh, Pueblo, man. What, what started the what started the whole thing? 2000, 2001. 2000. Uh, I met a uh, Francisco Leal. He's a uh, he's I think the ABO representative right now out of uh, Aslan Promotions. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. You know who you're talking about. Now? Yeah. Yeah. So I met him at a, a car at a car wash. Okay. You know, and uh, he asked me what I do. I asked him what he does, and he says I have a boxing gym where we don't you know charge children anything. And uh, we're looking for sponsors. And at that time, I think I had like five dry cleaners. That was my business. I was in the dry cleaning business. Okay. And uh, so, but were you were, were you already involved in boxing? At all? No. Okay. Ever since I was a kid, and, and you know, uh, as a kid, I trained at Kenny Weldon's. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was my background. Uh, but when he said we have a gym and we don't charge children anything, like like that struck a nerve with me. And I mm-hmm. said, Hey, man, I'm down with that. So I just started helping them out. One fifty, two fifty. Uh, you know, sponsoring the sponsoring. kids, yeah, right. and that's where I met Bobby Flores. He was the the head coach there. That's uh, that's Coach Hyman's uh, uh, head guy. I mean, under Walt, Walt and Bobby, mm-hmm. put him through the paces. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Big. He, he, he talks he, a lot about Bobby. No, Bobby. I remember Bobby. He oh, yeah. passed away, right? Yes, sir. I remember big big fella. Yes, sir. I remember. And uh, yeah, so I just started sponsoring them and. Uh, Bro, I, I just loved it, you know. I knew that that's what I was, uh, what made me happy. So what, what what makes you happy is what I feel like what you're meant to what, meant to do. And uh, I did that for a little bit, and uh, I didn't understand the business. But they go, you know, we, we got to start charging something. And I, I wasn't, now later I understand, you know, it's business, it's it's what you got to do to keep the doors open. But at that time, I'm like, I'm, I'm writing these checks, for it to be free, right. I'm not gonna keep writing checks, and we're gonna charge. Mm, right. So I decided with Bobby to to go do our own thing. See, but Bobby wanted to uh, he really wanted to have his own gym. So when that clicked in his head, he's like, "No, nah, I, I can't do it." And I was like, "Bobby, I already bought all this equipment. I put this big old down payment." Uh, oh yeah, y'all was going. Up. Yeah. The plan was there, and then he hit the brakes at the last, at, right. the, at the eleventh hour. Yeah, okay. but I'm glad he did, you know, because he's the one that actually said, you know what, we're, we're you know, we're brothers, we're friends, but I got to do this on my own, and, and I felt that it. it wasn't, it wasn't a personal thing. And he goes, but you know, there's these two brothers that are training kids out of their backyard. Maybe you should reach out to them, you know. That was Oscar and um, and Rudy Silva. Uh, so I said, you know what, hey. I'm up against the wall. I got no choice. Let me reach you out. You need coaches, right? Yeah. And I mean, I knew it from just hanging around with him. I knew that I could deal with the the beginners, uh, and that was my job. And uh, but I needed someone that was going to get them ready for competition. And so I reached out to Rudy, and uh, they jumped right on board because I'm like, look, we're not going to charge nothing. I'm paying the rent. Uh, I'm going to look for more sponsors, and we're going to, you know, figure this thing out. 
And like, uh, just by happenstance, uh, Rudy's background with Kenny Weldon as well, right? Or Munoz. Munoz. That's another individual. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. And see, but my my background in boxing, you know, that was in Galena Park. I'm from Jacinto City. Okay. And and that's a there's a little highway that divides where you really can't be walking down that. You know, God. it's just not meant for walking. <laughs> right, right, and right. and so I only did it for a little bit because everybody in the neighborhood was going there just to learn enough to because we would have, no we would have these little sparring sessions. And I would do great with the guys that were, you know, throwing wild like myself. But then there was these individuals that were just throwing these punches straight down the middle. I like, I couldn't deal with them. Like, what's what's going on? He goes, Nah, they're all training. They that train day. fighters. How, uh, how old were you at this time? I'm probably like 12, 13. Oh. Okay. And you gotta understand, like, my mom didn't put me in the sport, so like, I had to go cut grass, get my little. I mean, they weren't charging much. I can't even remember what they were charging. It wasn't much. But it was still you. Yeah. It was your response. I had to go pay it. And I said, man, I'm just going to be there like two, three months, learn some basics just to defend myself in the, you know, neighborhood bras that we have. There was a karate school down the street, so that was a lot easier. You know, I, oh, man, I could just go right here. Right, right, you know, right. At the end of the day, all we want to do is defend ourselves. But back to uh, when we opened up that gym, I learned the hard way because now I'm paying $2,500 rent. And I'm like, man... You know, and there's that, no money coming in because yeah. you want it. Bro, we're out there selling water, car washes, barbecues. To keep the gym open. Yeah. Right. I mean, can you imagine some people have a little 500? This is 2,500. It was 10,000 square feet. And so wow, it was a huge gym. And so that's my mentality. My mentality was... How, how old are you around this time? Uh, I would say 23, 24. Okay. And yeah. and you have, you still have the five other businesses, right? No, I slowly started going through them. Oh, okay. I went through a divorce. I'm losing money. Money's running out real fast. Really on your back. Yep. And so we were blessed. We were blessed with this individual, uh, Sergio Medina and and uh, John Portillo, who who just stepped in, bro. Who John stepped. Uh, uh, Jay. Yeah, John uh, Jay. He, he's run, Jay, Jay for Precinct uh, Three. Precinct Three. Yep. Shout out to Jay. Uh, what's his uh, Jay John? No, Jay Portillo. Portillo, but, but JP cares. JP cares. Yep. That's right. JP cares. Uh, bro, before I even open, before I even open the doors, uh, the city came in and said I had to put this three-hour firewall. I'm like, I'm running out of cash, and it's 75 feet long, 22 feet tall. That's a lot of sheetrock. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I told him, and and I've been knowing him for a minute, and he goes, Don't worry about it. I got you. And he, he put the wall, he put all the finishing touches. He's always been like that, huh? Yeah, bro, he's always been a good dude. So I, I can't complain. Things happen. They want to change the name of the gym. And I said... What, what, what was the name of this? What, Pueblo. Pueblo. Where did Pueblo, oh. where did it come from? It comes from the people, yes. the people's boxing gym. That's what that means? Yes, sir. Pueblo? Mm -hmm. I like that, yeah. yeah. I like it even more now. Yeah. See, because... I thought it was a place. No. Well, Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah, you know, There's a lot of people. But it's, it, I'm sure it means the people over there too, yeah. though, right? Yeah, for me but it was man, awesome. I like that, the people. What is the translation, in, in the actual translation in English? Pueblo, like... Uh, town? town. Right. Right, mm -hmm. right town. Pero, Pueblo is like community. Yeah. Oh, dude, dude, I never knew that, bro. Yeah, bro, that's my that's my move right there. Yeah. I like that. That's my and you know what's crazy? I wish I could tell you, man. Twenty years ago, I had this vision. Nah, I just I just knew it had to be the people's boxing gym because it had to be bigger than myself. A lot of people put their name on the gym. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I wanted something. <clears throat> you didn't want to make it about you. No, I wanted something bigger than me, way bigger than me. Yeah, that works, bro. Twenty years later, I was like, dang, that was the perfect name because with all the it countries, is, it is. You know, yeah. so. I didn't I didn't realize that. I just. I guess I took it not, not being not speaking Spanish. I figured it was just a place because, yeah. like you said, the only thing I ever heard of was Pueblo, Colorado, or whatever. Yeah. But the people's boxing, I like that. Man, yeah. man that's nice. So, yeah. so, so people wanted to change. Who, was it the coaches wanted to change the gym name? Or, well, uh, or Portico the, was putting all the money up. Who? Uh, John Portillo. Oh, the guy. With yeah. The firewall. Okay. He, he he was putting all the money up, and I could understand his position. He wanted to get as much publicity, maybe for it makes sense. Yeah. And so, look at him; he's running for office. Right. So so he's trying to make a change. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, well, if it's bigger than me, it's bigger than a company, so that's not gonna fly. Uh, one of the little persons that that came in there, bro. You know, I, we had hundreds of children that were. It's free. So you could imagine, I mean, people were dropping off their kids like it was daycare. I think I know who you're about to say because oh, yeah. I heard it. Yeah. I heard it in her episode. <laughs> right, right. 
it was Marlena Esparza. Right, she, right. she she walked in and it was crazy because I literally that was like my calling card. I'm like, we don't know who's gonna walk in that door. We could have the next Olympian, we could have this. And like she <laughs> said, she, Rudy and them didn't really want food with us. She's a girl. Right. She there was, was in my no line. Girls. Right. right. There was no girls boxing really. Right. To to speak of. Yeah. And so Deep rooted, man, this guy. Oscar's actually the brother, Rudy's brother, was the one that actually seen her. She know. said that. Oh, Oscar she, had her, she said, Rudy's brother trained me correct me for all. Yeah. Until he got to the point where he said, man, I can't really, Rudy, you got to take over my leg. Yeah, she, yeah. she gave you props, she gave Oscar props, yeah. Every, yeah, she said that on the episode. Yes, sir. So, uh, and so we, your benefactor, basically, on who was helping, uh, one of the name changes, and, and that really, really uh, crossed with the vision, though, right? Right. Absolutely. And, and that's a real thing. Yeah. And you know, but what's crazy is that you he know, wanted to change my boxing team to uh oh, to, to man and fresh pugilists. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't, no, no, I couldn't no, let no, him do no. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I know what you're yeah. saying. But you know and you know you have little differences or whatever, but I mean I went back through emails. And I was like, dang, not even two years later, we were working together again on some t-shirts, on something. So, you know, you make peace with people. Uh, like, Rudy, I never really even had an issue with him, but I see him at the shows. I wasn't really worried about him. I was sponsoring his children. Mm-hmm. I give him a t-shirt. His son won, you know, pick anything you want. It's bigger than that, bro. Yeah, always. It's bigger than that. Yeah. And when you find people that really love what, what you love, that's why I, I come. Yeah, bro. And I Comedy connect on that. Bro. I don't focus on, on the things that we have in common, you know, so. So, uh, so did you and, uh, What's my man's name? Jay. Jay. So y'all parted ways up at the gym? Definitely. Or? Definitely. Then, I don't even know how long it lasted. But, I mean, I had bought all the equipment. So the day I decided I'm, I'm jumping ship, I take everything with me. Everything. only thing I left was a, was a boxing ring, which was one of the coaches. Right. right. Which so, was there. Right? Yeah. So I took all my equipment. I had, a, I had a scenario like that. I know exactly what you're talking about. You brought in, you take what you brought out, right? Yeah, that's it. I went over to Second Ward. At uh, 2003 ish, and uh, just started over. But I started in a small space, a little, you know, 1,200 square feet. Much right. smaller. Yep. Had a little dry cleaners right next to it that was supposed to be paying for the rent, supposed to be. Right, right. And, uh, but we were still out there every weekend, bro, every weekend. And so, you know, I hear comments that, oh, it's all about money. I'm like, okay, it's all about money. I'm, I'm over here about to file bankruptcy. You know who <laughs> says that, right? Yeah. People who don't. They don't they know have that. no idea what it takes to, to to try to be successful. Not be successful, trying to be successful, man. Uh, uh, they, they, it's all about the money. Yeah. There's no money in boxing, people. Absolutely until, none. <laughs> until, it, until you get to the, the very peak contract. and there's only a handful of people, yeah. and you, you guys will be surprised how I many world champions ain't making enough money to, to retire on. World champions, they they, they got to keep fighting. They need their next fight. So those 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 Mayweather's and Kodos and all that type of stuff, man. That's that's what we all hunting for. We all want to put out a guy that big, but eh, it's all business, man. Everybody, you know, and everything that comes with it. And and, and this is one sport where you can't even get. It's hard to get sponsorships, man. Oh, yeah. You know, you can go to, you can go to, which is sad because in my father's day, he used to tell me about. My dad used to tell my dad fought amateur in the, in the service in the forest. Right, Joe Lewis was king. That was his guy. In turn, in turn, my guy too. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, he said, when I was a kid, you knew who the World Series baseball players was? And their hero was the heavyweight champion of the world. The heavyweight champion of the world was king of sports. You know, my dad was young, there was no NFL. You know, there was none of that. You had baseball and you had boxing. And that's all you had, man. And uh, so all through the years, and then me, I was born in the 70s, and, then, and him watching boxing and him saying, yeah, but, you know, Dempsey and what you call them had a million-dollar gate when it was $2. <laughs> you know, to get in the thing. You had so many people come to the So the sport buys is probably at, the, would you say, the peak as far as revenue mm-hmm. and, and all this with all these apps and everything. But it's still not, you know, I listen to the kids talking about LeBron James and, and, and all these guys who deserve the, the accolades, man. But there was a time when the king 
was the heavyweight champ of the world, middleweight champ of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, when we was kids, I don't know how old you are, Juan, but we're we, we the same age. Mm -hmm. And and when we was kids, man, Ray Leonard was mm -hmm. was the man in sports. Oh yeah, the man in sports. You know, Tyson. I, I know. I, I heard Tyson say one time. He said, "Man, I was 19 years old, heavyweight champ of the world. I met my hero, my sports hero, Magic Johnson, and he's telling me how great I am. Mm -hmm. How the hell am I supposed to be able to handle that? I see Magic Johnson. I'm like, God, you know. And this guy's falling all over himself. But you know what? That's when the heavyweight champ was. The king of sports, right? Yeah. So, so people think you're making money because you're on TV with a fighter or something like that, man. And, and and actually, you got so much money invested, you're not even climbing out the hole yet, man. So uh, I could imagine feeling that. Oh, it's about the money. Yeah. Oh, that, that that can be. I'm sure that can be frustrating if you don't turn it off. Right. You got to turn those people off. Well, you you live and you learn, and you know. Uh, I got tired. I got tired of going out there on that corner doing these car washes. And I told the children, I go, you know what? Look, if y'all each just pay 20 bucks, 20 bucks, we ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. Oh, no, coach. I'm, I'm hurting. And, and we, I'm like, man, your mom drives a better car than I do. How you hurt? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to go get me another job. And, and I'm going to pay the rent. But y'all not going to get nothing for free. Mm -hmm. So I made me a list. Y'all going to cut my grass, wash my truck. like thousand uh, percent. All these things that they had to do. And if you're not going to show up on Saturday to do these things, on Monday morning, I want, I mean, Monday afternoon, I want my money. Yeah. I, I, I made a big old list because I'm saying I'm going to have a full gym of kids in here. Mm -hmm. Not one showed up. Every last one had my $20. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I didn't start charging like way back when I didn't have to go through but you know what it was that decision was titled with my ego from the very moment that I decided to do the first gym because I left that gym because they were going to charge right. so how am I going to charge when I said that was the reason why I left and I didn't even realize that till like when I maybe a year ago when I started thinking back on it so I think it was uh, I think it was uh, uh, ah man it was that philosophy Super, Superman and, and ego Fred, uh, Nietzsche talking about the ego. The e uh, if man doesn't put that, basically, uh, I'm watering it way down. Uh, man's <laughs> ego is a motherfucker. That's basically what it is. And it is. It is. And, and so you could have caused yourself a lot less stress and still be the cheapest thing in town. Yeah. And you know who taught you? The guys you was trying to help the most showed you that any kids, so so don't take it hard, kids. But y'all some entitled little suckers and and and. Before cutting your grab, I just pay them the twenty. Yeah, yeah. because you win your twenty dollars to goof off at school yeah. while coach is busting his back yeah. in here keeping the doors open. So you really wasn't doing them a favor. Right? They need to pay. Yeah. Let their mother deal with the, the issue if she don't want to make them work. Yeah. And you know, years later, you you find that there is people that can't pay. Yeah. You know. Uh, Absolutely. And, and those are the ones you help. Mm. I had this one little girl, man. She was cleaning the gym at this community center where I was. Years later. She was cleaning the gym. I'm like, dang, she must have a lot of community hours. So I said, what, what did you do? I didn't do nothing. I said, you in here every day before we start and after we leave cleaning, you did something. She goes, no, I made a deal with the director and I clean and I don't have to pay gym dues. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no. So shirts, boots, trunks, gloves, whatever. As a winner right there. Yeah. Another one comes in. Oh, man, I'm on a, I'm on a fixed income, sir, and this, that, and the other. I said, don't worry about it. Mop and sweep this gym. It's 7,500 square feet. My new gym. And that'll take care of your gym dues. Let me talk to my grandma. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't pay that. Oh, uh, right. wow. So you have, you have to test them. You have to put, put a little test in there. And guess what? Every age. The grown men to the, to the kids to everybody, man. They always, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a culture thing, man. You don't know where they come from. And what I mean... We all have personal cultures, we all have uh, religious cultures, we all have, but you also have monetary culture. That's why poor people stay poor, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so that uh, I ain't got it, that's a culture. Mm -hmm. That's a culture. You, know, you never got it till something you, something you have to buy and, and, and you want, you want to buy. Mm -hmm. You want to, you want to, you want me to want you. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't come to you. <laughs> you yeah. came to me. I seen something the other day on the internet that said you, you'll never see a crackhead say, um, I want to crack, but I don't have $20. No. Mm -hmm. Never. No. Mm -hmm. That's a driven right. force to <laughs> get that rock. They're, they're right. going to do whatever yeah. they got to yeah. do to get the $20. Yeah, yeah. And, and 
How's it? Is that girl still around? The one you're talking about? No, she's gone, married. You know, uh, had some children. Is so, she no, no, not productive life? Oh, absolutely, or? absolutely. Yeah, that, 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 that's that improved, and she showed you as a kid though. Right. She was gonna be productive. Now, whether you think marrying the kids and family is productive, that's regardless. Yeah. To her, that might be what she wants and knows. But uh, those things, man, it's it, it's funny to watch these guys, man. That's why I don't take the uh, coach. You asked me how many fights. I got two pro fighters, but I got about ten on the team. We got about thirty people in the gym, but about 10, 10 amateur fighters. But your lip service ain't shit, man. Mm. Telling me you gonna do it, coach. You gonna see? I'm gonna show you. Da 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 da. Sure you gonna show me, son. Sure you gonna show me, but you can't show me the dudes. Mm -hmm. See, I learned years ago, the dudes ain't shit. Mm -hmm. If you come to me and say, "Coach, I'm hurting," we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But if you're hurting every month, <laughs> what's the common denominator mm here? -hmm. So, what it takes to be successful in fighting, from at least my point of view, mm -hmm. if you can't whoop this whatever every month, you certainly ain't gonna whoop it. When it becomes a, a, a uphill climb in this ring, mm -hmm. and this one can punch you, in, it's gonna be easy for you to take a knee and quit, mm -hmm. or pretend you hurt, yeah. or convince yourself you hurt. Yeah. You might not be pretending, but that shot just—you convince yourself it was too much to bear, because this is too much to bear. So, you know, I learned years ago about the money thing, as far as the boxing goes. That no, let's use it as a litmus test. Let's use it as that. If you, yeah, I'm no, not the cheapest thing on the block. Good. That's weeding out the bullshit, and then and then let's see if you can if you can keep up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And 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 that's basically what you was doing. You was finding that out yeah. on on the membership scale because you gonna see even kids, man, that you that you care about. You will love them and stuff, but they won't value what right. you're doing for them. Right. And it came because they don't know how to value. They wasn't taught to value things or. They could just be little snot nose getting over kids. You never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know, man. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So you went from you went from the first gym, whatever it was the first gym? Pasadena. Pasadena. Then you went to where's the second wood? Pasadena, they got a big they got a big boxing uh People love oh yeah. Yeah, right here. I'm talking about Pasadena, Texas. Yeah, Pasadena, yeah. Yeah, Texas, yeah. yeah. Where's, uh, Kenny Weldon, that was his yeah, little stuff. Yeah, right Galena there. Park, all that. Where's uh second Where is uh, that? Uh, next to Magnolia East End, right okay. next to downtown. Okay, okay. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that the new Edo? Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Edo. E A D O East Edo. End. It's been, uh, what's that word? Uh, uh, gent uh, gentrified. Uh, <laughs> oh, like they did in New Orleans. Yeah. So all the projects down there. Oh, yeah, now it's expensive. Yeah, yeah man. man. That's that's right. Everything's yeah. condos and stuff. So you move to second ward, figure out you need to charge these kids because if nothing else, it keeps them lying. Right. Weeds out the. Yep. Okay. And then, you know, I had, a, you know, like every young coach, because I see, I've been in it 20 years, so you see the young coaches come in, they think they're going to do something so, you know, <laughs> so different, so special. They're going to reinvent the wheel. Right, right. I was just like that. So, of course, when you do that, you get the old heads, Kenny Weldon, uh, uh, Walt Haley. You know, I had them on my back. I got suspended. I was doing the, the sparring shows. Uh, I would go set up a ring in front of Fiesta. Fiesta would pay me 500 to do a little, little session. We'd have our t-shirts, we'd have our keychains. Uh, they didn't like that. So th that's when they started coming up with all the rules. You can't do this, you can't do that. Oh. So I got suspended for a year, but I always had an assistant. I always had some- From being able to take part? In anything. Personally. I could, yeah, I can wrap up hands, I couldn't. You know, and I was so broke, and, and I just didn't really care. Because that was never my thing. My thing was never... I wasn't trying to produce champions. I was trying to just make an impact. And I knew that just having them kids in my gym was having an impact. But I had other people. I had other coaches uh, that helped me along the way. And they would take them to the competition. And I was, was good at making friends. So they would take them up on the, on the ring and, and have them participate and whatnot. And so I just found a way around that whole situation right they go you can't charge at a sparring show unless you know i said well can i charge a membership yeah. oh yeah you can charge them whatever you want all right cool a one-day membership is ten dollars to come in my gym oh. yeah <laughs> so Boom. yeah and i don't know who it was somebody showed up and said i know i don't want to be a member then it's, it's members only <laughs> so, right, so right. you can't come in the gym right, right. so you know you find 
ways around it. And, and did so, you get, so did we, you get a lot of slack from. Uh, oh yeah, you got to when you. I mean, for, but it lasted. Yeah. yeah, but you know, my mindset was like I literally thought, why do they hate me so much? Like, well, what's the problem? And I said, well, I'm gonna make them love me, and that's where that mindset comes of sponsoring, care package understanding where they're coming from because I'm a gym owner so I understand their struggles because they're living them just like I am you know right. can't pay their rent moving from one spot to another spot uh, so the, 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 spar the sparring events you was doing, the, the reason why you wasn't doing shows as as, oh. as as most to the sparring events was because it was basically for fundraising right right it was sanctions the uh, trophies you were trying to do the fundraising right okay so they'll find a way to cut in your fundraising right they wanted their piece oh, like yeah. a mob movie yeah you know right, right, yeah, I, got yeah. you. I got you I understand and you know but it's that mentality right of always trying to find a way that that leads me to where I'm at right now you know from starting with keychains and then say okay well what else I think when I first met you back in 2008, bro, they had a, a, on the wall, they had like some little things and I just started hanging up stuff. But I mean, I had a two foot table in a corner and now you go to my, man, man you got a whole you got a section. section. Yeah, yeah. You got a section. It's right, like, right. hey man, you gotta have at least 20 feet for us. Cause you know, <laughs> it, it, this ain't 2008, we don't got that I, I, need, I need some space. Yeah, I, got yeah. some, I got some goods. And, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we were, I was having a conversation uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking about that mentality that you have. You know, being you know an entrepreneur. To me, there's two, three different types of entrepreneurs. There's the one to work for themselves. They have, you know, they have a, a job where they can clock in, clock out, whatever they got. They're like subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Then you have a small business owner. A small business owner usually have a storefront, and they're very dependent on the market. If the market's bad, they, they feel pressure. Mm -hmm. If people aren't spending money, they get you know they start to get worried. And then there's an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur doesn't give a shit what's going on in the market. If the market's bad, they're gonna find other avenues. They, they, they just always find a way. So you, to, to me, you know, you, you started off, well, I don't know where you started off, but you said before you were doing the, the, the gym, you were doing dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. You leveraged that to support the boxing for a while, mm -hmm. then you start feeling you know, pressure from the community, and you just continue to, to, to find a way around that. What? What was the motivation that kept you going? Because I'm sure as you're sitting, as you're going through all this, you're like, "Fuck!" You're having these kind of, your yeah. thoughts, and like, "Why do they hate me? Yeah. Am I doing the right thing? Should I go back to dry cleaning?" Oh hell no, never. You know? I mean, I still do dry cleaning yeah. uh, to this day. You know, I, I not too long ago I still had a dry cleaners, but business is that's just life, you know. And when you love something, you figure out a way to to maintain it and support it. And and once I knew that this was my fix, you know, that this is what I love. Ain't, ain't nothing gonna stop me, you know. Man, you something, and, and normally every guest I have on here, I, we we say beforehand, is there anything you don't want to talk about because I don't want to talk about. It. And you don't gotta get too personal, but did you come from a platonic home, mother and father? My father passed away when I was seven. Okay. So was he? Was he? So, but he was in your life till. Oh seven. yeah, yes sir. Was he? Uh, was he a businessman or worker? But I'm trying to see where the drive came. That's from. my mom. Uh, your mother. Yeah, she she's always been uh, driven. Uh, yeah, from tamales to to anything. You, you know, know what? What we call a hustle in the yeah. streets. You, you know got to get it. There's a I don't know if there's a misconception or not. Uh, but who's who, who the hardest working family member in the Mexican family? Oh, the mother. The mother. I don't know if this the is Forrest. I don't know if this is Forrest or the Dutchman. But he said, why I wouldn't give me gas money last night? As <laughs> far as I always pull him off and tell me how he losing on these shows. And I'm sure he's, you know, yeah. that's a, they put on hell of a show, wow. man. So I'm sure they all lose the money. Yeah. But, uh, he, yeah, he put a, uh, he put a woe is me face on it. I gave it to his partner. Hey, yeah. see, he whatever one you are, he gave it to the other one. Right, exactly. <laughs> Check his pocket for your 50%. I think Joe's watching on, on Facebook, and Joe, we finally got internet in here, so the, the, the video and audio should be... No good. thanks No good. thanks to the next fight up. They were supposed to come through yeah. with some, some internet, man. <laughs> uh, I said, I watched, I wasn't able to make the show. And I was able to man. But I did, I was able to watch it on live, and I'm... And a couple of few of y'all fights, man, that I've seen. Great fights, the actual fights, mm -hmm. man. But uh, it looked like it was a good turnout. Not to uh, we'll get to that, but I, I was I was curious about that, bro, because 
that drive to not lose. You didn't want to lose. Right. You right. didn't want. Yeah, I'm not giving up. Yeah. You know, every every time you you find a way around it. And to me, I know for, uh, with fighting, I one of my one of what I was brought up on, and, and I tell a guy, I said, listen, man, there's a there's a there's a back door, there's a side door, there's a couple windows right here. Maybe you need to act like you're going through this door so we can get through the side window, you know? Mm. And, 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 and it's theoretically, and of course, there's systematic ways to do all this shit, but it's basically, it's the theory of, if I allow you to block me, it's like I tell my fighters, and, and man is one of my fighters, he'll take it. <clears throat> if this guy is better than you, so what, you just lose? Right. That's a, so, so he's faster than you. And so now you can't win? Because right. if that's your answer, well, then this really ain't a science. This is just an athletic competition. And and whoever's the fastest guy will be wins. Being, being an entrepreneur and being in, in boxing, I think, are one of the most, two biggest things that can correlate. Because for me, boxing and, and, and being a true entrepreneur, it's the same shit. You get in the ring, you get in the ring to box, you get in the ring to, to, to be an entrepreneur. There's no way you can be in a fight, let alone a great fight, let alone win a great fight without getting punched in the face a couple of times, mm -hmm. getting hurt a couple of times. Same thing with being an entrepreneur. There's no way you're going to be in the game, be part of a great game, mm -hmm. and win in the fight of being an entrepreneur without adversity. facing adversity, getting punched in the face, going back to the corner, going back home and being like, fuck. I told you one time, I said, son. You're gonna get hit in the mouth. You gotta hit him in the mouth the best. <laughs> okay, coach, I got you know. I thought it was gonna mess up, but I get the point across. You know, you're gonna get hit as a fist fight. You're not supposed to let him hit you right, right? You be it rolling, catching, whatever. And and he's and he's ah, you know different keys open different. You know, I uh, Robert love him to death. He's one of the smartest intellectual fighters. I've ever had in 22 years. Robert but, Hitman. Really? Yeah, the hit, he was a hitman. But I say, son, this is this is your body's got to work with your mind, and the only your body's not a brain. You got to train that to work with your mind. So even though you understand what I'm telling you, don't mean you're gonna go out there and just exactly. fucking do it. Yeah. Because your mind's saying do something. That I say it's like fatigue. Your mind's saying do something, and your body can't respond. Mm -hmm. I say, so just because you understand what I'm saying has nothing to do with being able to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. You're right, Cole, you're right. Because there's been things, the light bulb clicks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, son, I've been working with you for months on this here, and now because I said it different, yeah. ah, like, now you can fully understand yeah, you how you can do it. To get that, ah, okay, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. man, it's a, but, but I like to say that if, 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 if this guy is faster than you, I like to use speed because I always hear speed with me. Speed is power. Speed is physical. Speed is but You know, that's like go-to shit. Mm -hmm. Well, I know how to beat speed. So there's an answer to every equation. And the thing is, you know, with the right fight. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but if every time this guy put up a roadblock and, and your answer is athleticism, he's just faster than you or, or he's stronger than you or punches harder than you, well, this shit ain't really a science then. It's just a track meet. Mm -hmm. Right? I have no belief this ain't a track me. Right. This is a real skilled sport. So if every time Wine did something and they threw up a, 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 a brick wall, and he said, well, the brick wall is there. Well, it was a good go. Mm -hmm. I gave him eight years of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we go back to the cleaners. Yeah. Nah. You wouldn't be here 27 years later, right? Nah, Am I right or wrong? Nah, absolutely. And, and, so, and so those were uh, 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 roadblocks that. And so, you don't face it. And you go. Oh no, you're good. Yeah, I think it's those obstacles that really make it more rewarding. Because if I just had a straight shot to the top, it's like maybe I wouldn't. Like man, sometimes I just reminisce on some of the things that I went through. Like a kid with the free gym. Exactly. Right. You know. So when did it, when did the brand really start taking off? Because that I mean, the brand is is really becoming. Come out of my element. Yeah, I like to listen to all this stuff. Yeah. No, I mean because. Yeah, he's, I, he's, got, I, he's got stuff all over the world. Oh, that's in the rest yeah, of the he's got, he, he's got world champions wearing his stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, very, I'm very, I'm uh, very, 
incompetent to the brands that I don't understand and stuff, but I understand the importance of it. And when I see, you know, one of my favorite fighters, active fighters in the world, got Pueblo uh, Mikey. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't see them, Mikey got oh, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, see them yeah. Pueblo box and stuff, man. So, yeah. so, yeah, when did the brand really, I, when did you find your stroke? Or right. when did, no, when did you say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because that's a conscious decision. Right. That, that, that doesn't happen by accident. Right, right. You, you know, did you, what, when was that aha moment when you said, you know what, I want them? Because there's a brain and there's a gym. Right. Right? Right. And, did you treat them separately? Absolutely. So when I started, what I did was I had a separate company, and I still do. Mm -hmm. It's called Solo Boxing. And I named it Solo Boxing because I was by myself. I remember that. Yeah. I remember Solo Boxing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the that. gloves, everything. So what? why I did That was all some of the stuff. I no, had. that's Solo Box Self. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, go ahead. And, and so I did it that way. Why? Because they were hating on, on Pueblo. Uh -huh. So I said, okay. I'm with the Pueblo. I like Pueblo. I like that name. Bro. I said, I'm going to create this one because I understood that not every, I only have, you know, 20, 30 kids. Right. I want something way bigger than just 20, 30 kids buying this product. Right. I wanted everybody to buy it. So the first conscious move was creating a separate company mm -hmm. and, and they started buying that. I started going to the shows. I understand that I had like, for example, a Pueblo keychain. They don't want a Pueblo keychain. They want the Texas, they want the Cowboys, they want Mexico flag, USA right. flag. But I'm the brand. So what I did was sponsor, sponsor. I don't even know that I'm doing this because I'm just doing what's in the heart. I'm helping, helping. Next thing you know, people start respecting the brand. Right. And I'm like, you know what, let me just put up one shirt. Now we put up two shirts. Start Mikey Garcia. There's no, no, no sponsorship there. All we did was he was doing a, a, a toy run a, a collection. And we sent them like 200 little string backpacks so the children could put their toys in. You know, just planted that seed. And I'm sure he appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Who's this people trying to help me help you? For sure. Right. Then uh, my, my brother Joe that helps me at the show, seen him in San Antonio. And he goes, hey, mate, can we give you this shirt? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who, who Polo Boxing is. Registered, bought right. the backpacks. Send him a jacket, throws it on. So... Man, but now they as fuck. Like they, they yeah, sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your jackets are sexy as hell. Well, because sexy. because it comes from from a boxing like like what would I want? Do you design this? Stuff? Yeah, everything. everything. You design. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you know, just when I when I started traveling and I'd go into the gift shops and I started thinking about my friends, my family, what they would like. So I'm like, man, why don't we have like they have magnets? Why don't we have magnets in boxing? So I started making magnets. You know, uh, the the jacket was a, a jacket that I seen for the NBA. And I'm like, man, they, that's, that's fly with all the pictures. Let's just convert it. So I just convert things over to boxing and do something for us. Because we got this little niche community where the big dogs are like, man, there ain't no money in that. Not depending. Not directly. Mm -hmm. You got to find a way to make your money around. It's it. very, boxing is very a niche, niche uh, market. Very but, but uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but passionate. If you're in the niche, yeah. You're passionate about it. If something catches on fire, you, you know, they, they want in. Right. They want in because boxing is my thing. Yeah. You know, boxing, is, you know, I <clears throat> I love the Celtics just because it's the Celtics, right? Players come and go. But when we as kids, players didn't come and go. They went and played for a team, and that was the, the legacy of the team. So I'm, I tell people now, I buy a Celtics jersey. You know, sure, I like the Bird jersey in the old school, but, you know, uh, Lil Zeke, he comes and goes. I'm waiting for the next one. I'm a Celtics. That's a brand loyalty, mm -hmm. right? right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Brand, right? right? So boxing is very niche. Uh, if you want, if you like boxing, if boxing's your thing, man. Yeah, you all the way in, man. And you get the shirts and jackets with all the all the all the champs. And, you know those guys know who those guys are. Even even the newcomers, man. Even the guys who like like you said, the coaches mm -hmm. that get the videotapes and think they can coach now. Even those guys, though, they all the way in. Yeah. They all the way in, and, and they'll and you can watch them evolve from two year coaches to five year coaches, and their mind just you can see their mind expanded because they learn things that that you know, and you say, ah, now you understand. It ain't that it ain't that bullshit, man. You got to learn, and you you know you got 
sadly, you got all these kids beat up while you was trying to figure that <laughs> right, out. Right. And you got a guy like Coach Derrick who calls you out on the shit. But, and I will. But the thing is, uh, very passionate, whether they newcomers, yeah. whether they old heads, mm -hmm. know the history, learning the history. And, and and it's hard. I think that that brand thing. That's why I don't understand. The, I guess I do understand it. I, I, I well, do. You know, I mean, when I start talking to coaches, you know, we just connect because I've been what they've been through. You know, I lived in my gym for a year. You know, when I had a choice, an apartment or a gym. And I'm like, man, I'm just sleeping there. I could sleep in the gym. I go to my mom's, take a shower. I'm not going to stay there because I'm a man and I can't, you know, be living at mom's. But for a year, I, I slept in the gym. And I understand that struggle. So when, when you know that struggle with coaches, man, it's like night and day. And that's what you see at the, at the shows. I start talking to a coach and his children, his fighters are over there looking. They're like, oh, he's cool with my coach. Next thing you know, the whole family's coming. So I don't even need an individual coach to make a purchase. Right. They see that connection between us, and then all the family's going to come, you know? And I mean, I'm coming from, when you look at, when, you're, when your interest is really the, the children, and you don't really care what, what team they're with, you right, know? Right, right, right. Now you're just a, 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 a true fan. And it's like, I can't, like, now I watch fights, and it's like, who, who you who you going for? And it's like, man, I used to just go straight hardcore just for the Mexican. Right. But it's like, I know that that other fighter struggled just as much as he did. Right. You know, he sacrificed as much as he did. So now it's just like, may the best man win. Right. And so I'm like, damn, man, maybe I should become a judge now. But now nah, <laughs> I got to tend to my table. <laughs> you, you talked about some of the obstacles that you faced. Who has, who has been some big supporters to this day when you can turn to for advice if you need it? Because all this stuff... The stuff that you're talking about, that's knowledge, right? That's, that's that, that, you know, whether it's in school, uh, like a, a, a book form or a mentor or experience, mm -hmm. you know, which, where did they come from in your situation? Did you have someone along the way? or did I've had so many, bro. Yeah. I had so many and, and uh, I don't want to, you know, take away from one by giving to the other or anything like that, but I had a lot of mentors mm -hmm. and, and... I think the key for me was I never stopped being grateful. We, we might have our differences, you know, but like me and Francisco, the first person I started the gym with, man, now we're like brothers, you know, and especially when it hit me, like, dang, man. But I had to go through all that. Right. If I didn't learn on my own that you had to charge something, then, you know. Uh, you would really have never did. Right, yeah, right, right. And, and grew as a person. So now I see him at the shows and it's all love and I've set up at his shows, uh, you know. So now, I mean, now it's like you know Gary V and and you know I learned from a lot of people. Have you been turned on to uh, Gary V yet? Mm -hmm. Wow! Uh, yeah, no. Who was that? Wow! Uh, he's a he's a he, well, he's an entrepreneur, but he he, he, he I'm not. An man, th 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 think about me at a I thousand. Be, but, uh, <laughs> think, think about what I do at a thousand percent scale. Yeah. He's a he's a like on the motivation dude. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He does it at a yeah, thousand percent scale of what I try to do. I've gotten so much from him, bro. Yeah, I, he's and great. I, I think one of the main things is that he just turned me on to some things that I had going on internally. Yeah. You know, uh, so w the way he worded it. So, for example, like this has been my uniform for as long as you know me. Know. You know, <laughs> which has been. 11 years now, yeah. and I, you know, because I'm not a Houstonian, but 11 years, yeah. yeah. And, and so it's always been, I'm in this uniform, because I'm not trying to impress nobody. I'm not trying to, to be better than anybody. This, this is what I live. This is what I am 24-7. That This is my life. I don't, I'm not worried about a big house. I'm not worried about a fancy car. My cars are paid for. I do what I love. And I understand that, that a lot of people have to go to a job that they hate, right. you know. Yeah. And, and are miserable. And money ain't, and a big paycheck, they miserable as shit. Yeah. Right, right. And so I get to, man, travel all over the world, open up gyms, uh, do what I love. And so, bro, it's like, that in and of itself, sometimes people, somebody has to, you're already living it. Right. But the way they said it makes you realize right. it. And I'm like, damn, man. So right now, bro, it's like. Being grateful. Yeah, I, I could get hit by a car, you know, driving out of here, but I lived every moment the way I wanted to live. I did did it my way. Yeah. So is is <clears throat> man, you got a lot of products, man, and 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 what's always 
it seemed to be quality products, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and there was several shit I wanted to get. Now, I might don't have the money on me or something, but is, 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 is your stuff uh, made here or made okay. out of Mexico? I was gonna or? Ask that too. The majority is made out of Mexico, uh, out of where I'm from, out of Guanajuato. Uh, so, which that, part is it? This is like central. Yeah, central yeah it's about four hours from Mexico City. Do they have a lot of textiles type of places in Mexico? Oh, yeah. And especially where I'm from, I mean, we have 1,300, I wouldn't call them sweatshops, but you know, they're shops. <laughs> <laughs> the economy is different, yeah, yeah. so it's, it's sweatshop yeah. for us. Oh, over there, it's not child labor. That's my nephew, man. Yeah. He's, he's got to make these keychains, keep pumping them out. <laughs> it, ain't you, uh, it ain't child, it ain't no child labor. Well, I mean, it's, you get your man for some things. Right. So you got to be in a shop, so, yeah. but, but, uh, uh, you everything, t shirts, everything, everything comes out of Mexico. Okay. Mexico yeah. you go out there, how often do you go out there? Bro, I'm out there like every 10 days, uh, you know, 15 days a month. I mean, I, I, I don't feel they right. Get, they get, well, is it your shops out there? Or My home? uncle, family. Oh, okay, yes, good. Yes, oh, good. Yeah, you, yeah, I gotta keep it. Uh, I always got to keep Did the money. Did you open those shops? Out there? No, no. Oh, okay. They were already in business. I mean, oh, that okay. that whole area is is a textile industry, you know. So all I did was, okay, you, you could do that. So why can't we do this for like my uncle? He mass produces soccer jerseys, uh, so yeah. I just started converting them over to boxing. You know, yes sir. Oh, that's awesome. There's a lot of uh, relationships, and, and man, it's so important, man, to get something off the ground and, and, and keep it moving because you. One thing I noticed about Pueblo from, from, from when I first came around to now, the variety of, like I'm saying, the variety of different things you did, right. the jackets, the, the different uh, uh, t-shirts and, and, and well, all those things. Hatches, magnets, I mean. And, and it looks like, and it, and it looks from the outside looking in, I don't know your business, but I'm like, man, this dude's. Yeah, you do doing, just doing the same. Right? Yeah, yeah, full time. Yeah, okay. Put your, whatever. Nah, I've never had really a job. I mean, right. at, at 20 years old, I'm on my own. I'm doing my own thing. Now, now you you have the gym in, in uh, Wichita Falls. Wichita Falls. I have so people Texas. Always, I thought Wichita. I did too when he first told me that. I'm like right. Wichita Falls. Ain't that like out of state? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's a part of. It's in Texas. It's right? in Texas. Yeah. 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 People say, well, how many gyms do you have? Me personally, I have one gym. That's all I have. Do you franchise them? No, oh, okay. the, these other gyms, they're all sponsored. So, like in Mexico, we have 10 now. And what I did was I just worked with the city that they already have a gym. We go in there and, you know, usually they have like three or four punching bags. So you supply Put supply it, convert it over to Pueblo. Now it's a, a, it's a distribution point where the members that go into that say, hey, I need a t-shirt, hey, I need some hand wraps, you know. And, 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 and it fills a need. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So it ain't like you're just trying to uh, get your name. No, 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 no. Every boxing gym needs supplies and everything's wore out. It's like, like you said earlier, there's more money in it, man. So, so I'm sure they appreciate the hell out of oh, somebody yeah. coming in there and, 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 and... Oh, it trips them out. You know, like I went to El Salvador and I put one down there and uh, I tied that up in about two weeks. I just started looking for, for people in El Salvador, hashtags and all this. I made some phone calls, I told them what I wanted to do, and they're like, you just gonna come give us this stuff? Yeah, like, they yeah, want man. you to show and prove, so you yeah. pop up. Oh, no, I didn't have to, because I've already been to Cuba, I already went to Colombia, I already, you know, I just uh, sent them the videos. That's no, you got a track record. Yeah, I yeah. got a track record. You know, you can call these people up, they, they can tell you what, what I do. So, nice. you know, we got the WBC president who put in a good word and, and uh, you know, show support for what we're doing. And so that are, are automatically oh, opens a lot of doors. So. Pueblo uh, uh, as a brand and and involved in boxing. Okay, that's done. Mm -hmm. You're involved in boxing. Sure, you want to be involved more and more. Mm -hmm. But what's your what's your what's your goal, brother? Oh, what's your? I'm sure you will always have goals. But what's your main? What are you trying to do? Because oh, because earlier you was like, man, I wasn't trying to even put out champions. I was just trying to give kids a place to fight. Right. Is 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 the goal to be a community? Uh, uh, Same goal from day one. Day one was simply make a positive impact, right. you know. And now it's grown where I understand it don't even have to be under this brand. Ooh. So what I'm doing is I, I got this website that I'm working on, and basically I'm putting all my mistakes and conversations when I have with coaches, things that I've learned, uh, putting it all on a website like a resource mm -hmm. where people can just go and 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 pull. Like they say, well, how'd you get this sponsor? How'd you? Uh, so I'm a 
I, I'm tired of explaining this. I'm just going <laughs> to put a PDF. You could change out the words, put your gym name on it. Because if, if it's just about ha having Pueblo gyms, man, it's going to take me a long time to do the impact that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So if, if... That ain't your goal. No. Right, it, right. So that ain't your goal. So I was like, so why don't I just... You know, you don't even got to tell me you went on there and got it. Is this, is this website live? No, not yet. Okay. That, that's what I'm working on, putting all these different resources on it. And so this way, I still make that positive impact on, on a massive scale where people can... Because there's a lot of a little assistant coaches that are thinking about going to go open a gym. Wait before you do that. You know, you got to understand this, this, this. Oh, I'm going to throw a show every month. No, you're not. Because people are not going to come to your show every month, you right. know. These are all things that I've already worked out and other gyms have already worked out. We've already gone through these mistakes. So we can put those out there and, and make it clear so they don't have to do those same mistakes. You know what I mean? Uh, and I feel like that's the way I'm going to make a massive impact. Besides of what I'm going to continue doing, by me living this lifestyle that I live, two-bedroom home, you know, used cars, I don't have this insatiable appetite that I got to feed. More. Yeah, so I could... I, Bro, I could put a gym in Mexico for $2,000. Top to bottom, everything. Banners, everything. You know, because they, they already have the location. The right. city provides that. I just go in there with my equipment for 2000 and I'm going to have hundreds of kids going through that system, going through that gym, benefiting from it. So, I have to calculate. You know, people say, well, you sponsor this fighter. I'm like, well, you know, that 250 you know what I could do with 250 in a country? Uh, that really needs some support because right. you, you just you just asking for some extra money man go to the barber shop go to the the dry cleaners you go to and get that little 250 you take 250 from my pocket you're hurting a lot of people because that 250 I can buy five punching bags I can make five punching bags that are gonna last 10 years and countless of people are gonna be hitting on those mm -hmm. so I have to be very wise on how I move those sponsorships around you mm -hmm. know yeah you know, you know, one of the things you said was, you know, what your goal is is to have an impact, right? That's it. And that's the front side of it, right? Because I have, I, and, I, and this is something that I was been thinking about. You know, what is, what are my goals? Because sometimes you have yeah, all this shit that's going on, you lose focus, mm -hmm. right? And so you have to come back and say, okay, what is it that I'm really trying to do? That way. The, the, the bullshit clear mm -hmm. well that's not important that's not important because it's not even getting to where, where I'm at and so yeah, I had the same thought I'm like man you know and that, that's that's my goal is to have an impact you know, in, in other people's lives whether it's with the food the gym the podcast whatever else that, that I'm doing but then there's the back side we have to be in a position where we can do that right right and that's the burden that people don't see is yes that's our goal, have an impact. But if we're not in a position to do that, we can't fucking do that. So that's 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 the back end of the thing. It's like fuck, okay. You gotta have gas. Yeah, we well, gotta have. You know, you gotta be able to 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 maneuver those. those right. Those well, see, but one of the things is how, the way you can be able to do that is simply understand what makes you happy. Right. See, I knew that I didn't need to escalate. Right. I and that's where I was getting to. Is he's living? It goes back to. Living below your means. Yeah. Well, it's below not even below because I'm, bro, I could jump on well, a plane at any moment that I want and say, I'm going here, I'm going there, and I do it. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that, but I'm going to go with the purpose. Yeah. You know, I'm not going, they go, oh, you're going on vacation. Yeah, it's not below your means. Yeah. If, if, well, that's if, if it's your standards. Right now, it's if it's your standards. Yeah. Then it's not I, below your means. Yeah. If, if you, if you, you take, you take me, and I know what you're saying, man, and, and, and hold your thought because I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, you know me for a couple years now, uh, personally, and I don't give a fuck about impressing you. Matter of fact, I matter of fact, I think I'm the shit with the raggedest call, with the raggedest. As long as my wife, as long as my wife is happy, yeah. that's the only burden I put on myself. But, but you know, I think I'm the shit for what I know in my experience and what I do. Uh, not because oh man, D got this, he got that, and and I know people say that, but they don't mean, dude. I live that. You know, I've been in positions in my life that led to trouble, where I was making the most money, money, monetary money, 
and it was miserable because it, it conflicted with who I was. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? I had to let all that shit go. And if you're not, because I was never ego driven in that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just with boxing. I'm gonna show you what I know and what my family knew and where our boxing come from. From what happens in this in this ring and what happens, mm -hmm. right? Not because of nothing else. I'm gonna show you who I am because if you come to Derek and say something, you never and you say Derek. I'm gonna tell you this, bro. This is between me and you, or whatever. You're never gonna hear it from nobody else. I'm gonna know that you know that I'm fine. Mm -hmm. This guy knows why I think I'm the shit. Right. Not because of nothing, none of that. So, so, man, I think that's very important, bro. When you, when you, it ain't below your means because if you pull up and you think I better go spend all this in a car or on a house or whatever. To show people I'm successful, man, well, we got some shit to work out personally, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You gotta work some shit out personally because, bro, I, you know, <laughs> my father was a big man, but he was a criminal. He was, you know, he he, 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 twenty-seven years, bro, three different times, added up to twenty-seven years. You know, he, he said, "Son, I knew when I walked in the room, I could whoop every motherfucker in there. You see, five, three, and five. He said, "But." I wasn't impressed by what they had because I just take it from them. The fuck you gonna do it about? Now as a young kid, you you hear that and you go, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to fall out of Now I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy. I want you to know these things. That, but bro, if that defines you, watch how quick just me and I'm nobody can take that from you. Then what? Mm -hmm. So you better find something in your own self. And 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 so that's why I feel the way I am. That's why when I walk in, I'm comfortable. I'm, I feel safe. I'm not. I don't worry about. And then I look around. I scan and I see. Uh, he's intimidated. He's trying to pretend he ain't. This guy is this, and this guy is that, and this guy is this. And and you take wine for him. I ain't blowing smoke up his ass because I had no need. But pulling up tells you my business. This is what I do. This is how I do it. This is why I'm happy. This is why I'm going. All right. Nice to meet you. I'm out of here. That's I think that's very important in life to be to be uh, not satisfied. Satisfied ain't no. the right word, but but I, in what's tune. the word I'm looking for? I'm in tune. In tune. In tune, in tune with what, what makes me happy. And I understand, hey, if, if that escalate makes you happy, right? That's, it's all good. I'm not knocking success. No, absolutely right. if, not. If, if you want a sick man, it's okay. He said one time. I'm pretty sure it was you say, "Go, what you against success?" No, 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 no. That ain't one of the look, dude. I'm just not a, uh, a, a car guy or, or this kind of guy, but I'm this kind of guy. Right. So this kind of, I want this to success to the to the mountain. Yeah. Ah, ain't nobody gets money. I'll show you a capitalist if you yeah. ain't. Yeah. You sure act like a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but you know what? And I, I try to tell people that for the little bit I know. Listen, you want to help people be a capitalist, bro. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand goods and services and try to be successful so you can help people, man. Mm -hmm. But you know why you why y'all want to spread this twenty dollars? Then none of us can't eat. Right. But yeah, man, I think I think that's what I see with people. And I look around and man, everybody likes to be seen and, and be appreciated. Of course. But and I say this a lot. What's your parameters, man? Tell me your parameters. If I know your parameters, then I can understand you. And say this is a good guy, it's a bad guy. Because if you don't have any parameters, what won't you do? Right. What will you do? Mm. That's important, man. That's important, man. Because it, 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 otherwise, shit gnaws at your soul, bro. And, and then all of a sudden, if you don't got, if you don't attain things, then you think you don't count. Well, that's a problem. Right. That's a problem, man. I like a guy to come in here and and and, and I do it through <clears> my own little way. With these fighters, mm -hmm. I don't care if they're ten years old or thirty. All you want, <coughs> son, for real, is what them size eleven stand on. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now you better have some parameters that you'll stand on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you don't really count, man. Mm -hmm. and, and then once the guys figure that out, then they can set up. They can draw that line in the sand and say, "You can't come across that line, bro." Not without repercussions. Mm -hmm. Now you might get me. But when I get back, dust myself off, I'm going to draw that same line in the sand, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I think uh, uh, we got to check that ego for that. Yeah. And not, 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 not that you shouldn't have uh, success. Success. You know, yeah. Honor's a good thing. Pride is a sin. Honor's a good thing, right? 
Thank you for tuning in to Soapboxing Podcast. This week's episode is brought to you by What You Craven Food Truck and Catering. Looking for a good food truck? Reach us at whatyoucraven.com. Now, back to the show. Enjoy. I got I got a, a good team around me. I got a good team. Like today, we're doing three shows. My wife and her helpers doing one up in uh, Dallas. My brother Joe's doing one in Austin. His daughter and sister are doing one in uh, the PBC show down in Edinburgh, I think. You know, and and really, my wife is the one that allows me where I can just get on a plane and say, "Look, I got to go open up this gym here. I want to go do this." Uh, she just understands what makes me happy. I'm happy. How's gonna be happy? You What's know? your wife's name, bro? Sophia. Sophia. How how integral is she? Backbone, <laughs> backbone. Because I, I mean, I'm like somebody texts me, "Hey, I want some hand wraps." Send this guy an invoice for this. Yeah. You know, do this, do that. Her being down with the plan and being part of it is everything. Yeah, everything, yeah. everything. It's 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 uh. I told a young gay man guy I was always no good until I got grown, and I said, uh, and when I say grown, mature, I said, that, you know, at a base level, bro, we don't survive unless you find your mate, right? And that mate, and I don't. I don't get into my faith in that, but you know, that mate is made for you and you were made for her. And y'all, uh, uh, it's like a, a light socket in a poop, right? You need this for the energy to run. And if y'all on the same wavelength, sky's the limit, bro. Yeah. And and say you don't be a big in there, but she's happy fulfilled, you happy fulfilled. And, and, and so when you find yourself falling out of tune, you gotta get back in tune, man, because you're, and proof positive is, that's why I asked you the question, man. Because you know, if, if you got a if you got a helpmate that's 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 handling this business, y'all have the same goals, bro. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine, man? Every successful dude, I think, a uh, successful person, if they're married, their marriage is is, is is successful. Now, that ain't to say you can't get lost in the sauce and screw it up. You know, some men are weak, some women are weak mm-hmm. in certain areas, man. But I can imagine, bro. And then I heard you say. Earlier that you was divorced before me, me, me too, mm-hmm. and uh, so you <laughs> you had a practice run. Oh yeah, <laughs> knowing what's what not to do. Right, right. Hey, you know, if you know what not to do, well, shit, I got a shot because I I, I won't repeat that, mm-hmm. and we get we get figured out. But I imagine she's an intricate, uh, integral part of uh, successful. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, she runs the gym pretty much. When that's, I'm what, that's what I was uh, heading for. You got you got the gym back at home. Yep. And so she runs that. She runs that. And we have coaches in place there. Or? Yeah, I have eight coaches over there. Oh, nice. mm-hmm. So we have close to 400 members. Wow. Uh, you know, 7,500 square feet, but it's you know fitness. 24. I mean, not 24 hours, but morning. And, uh, yeah, morning and afternoon classes. Afternoon. You know, uh, and that's the only. Were y'all in a? Uh, are you in the pro boxing or what? You have pro fighters? No, I have no interest in. in, in, in Do you coach? Man, that's a whole. Not, not anymore. Not anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, every once in a while, like when I visit gyms, I like to work with beginners. You know, because mm-hmm. everybody wants to work with the one that's already doing something. You hey, want to see the light bulb? Yeah, no, nah, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I like. You know, and I hate that, bro. I don't want to take on fighters uh, that's already built. Amateur all pro man, oh, yeah. because. Uh, it's work, man. It's a lot, and I ain't afraid of work. But it's a it's a fine line to say if they had any kind of success as a fighter, amateur or otherwise. What do you take away? You know, you may see a glaring flaw. That's why I love boxing, man. You see a glaringly flawed thing that if you correct, you won't be as successful as the been. And it's much easier if you groom that guy. To, to 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 map out his way than trying to fix fix a guy, you know. Uh, not that I won't do it, but uh, and you'll never get the credit for it. You will never get the credit, and and, and I like uh, what you said with them young kids, man. You watch the light go on. You watch the understanding of of uh, uh, making things. Ain't no sense. Mm-hmm. But I'm with you on that, bro. And I, I mean, I'm balls to the wall in on boxing from every level. But yeah, man, it's nothing like that pure kid yeah. learning to fight. And 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 
especially if he, he's got to work at it and he's sticking to it and he's doing it and he's doing it to his arm ready to fall off, but he keeps on doing it, keeps on doing it. Man, that's the, that's the thing that keeps us uh, uh, glued, I think, to the sport. And I, I, for me, it was like, that's where I got my confidence. And it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, when I was swinging off crazy, I was depending all on heart. But I, I learned these little basic things, and now it's like, I'm going in there with confidence, but I use that same confidence. Okay, you threw these little roadblocks at me, but watch me get around them. You know, and it's always like a little game. So I have fun with it. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, I see the, the, the roadblock, but I'll get around it. And then getting around it, I'm going to learn something. And man, when you learn something, it's like, Invaluable. 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 Yeah. I want to ask something before we start getting to uh, the show that thing that we got going on in boxing. Uh, <clears throat> do you still, are you the spearhead for your brand right now? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And do you ever get, do you ever think about the point where I don't want to, I don't want, I don't, I, I, I want to get to the point where I'm, I, I have my brand, mm -hmm. but I'm not the one. Spearheading, as opposed to well, me, me being you being the, the the face of your brand, right? And you doing the shows, the, the podcast, and, and the interviews, and being at the shows, but having someone else be the operations, right? Well, as far as growing your brand, and getting to the point where okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug in a CEO. Mm -hmm. I'm the owner, but I'm gonna plug in a CEO to run to, to run the, the different the different. Uh, facets of, of, of color boxing. I see that happening when uh, when I'm dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I don't. This is this is my passion. It's my you life. You enjoy the, the, yeah. the this part. Of it. Yeah, and and now I don't have a problem with somebody being more qualified. Uh -huh. And if I see someone that's more qualified and they have that same passion, right. I'm very easy to say. Now you in charge because right. I've, I've I've played second fiddle, like my uncle. They do the manufacturing. Right. I, I'm not trying to take on that, right. but. I have this vision of, of, of sponsoring and putting these gyms and right. having a hundred gyms just in Mexico. And who else is going to do that if, if they don't got my passion? Because right. they're like, nah, man, I want to go buy this car and, and I could do with one less gym. I can't. Right. I got to have it. I'm going to have it. And I just keep going, you know? So it would take a, a, a guy all in with, with to, to, to sit back and let go of the reins a little bit and, and be more efficient. Right. And what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, I've had best friends that simply were just more qualified. And they, we don't even have to say it. He's the CEO. At, you know, I had a, a paintball business. And that brother was just more, uh, you know, book smart, everything. I still, there's a, there's a, a role that I had to play. Because I've always been in tune with customers. But as far as paperwork and all this kind of stuff, I'm like, you know, you're in charge. <laughs> you're in charge. You, you got this. But in this... It's a small team of here in Texas. We've got a huge team down in Mexico that have to do embroidery, have to do sublimation, they have to do the textile, the gloves. That's a whole integral part, and I have key people that, that help me. They're not even, it's not like they just work for me. They, they still produce stuff for other clients and whatnot, but I need them on my team so that I can be able to do what I do. Did you have, did you have a nest egg when you said, okay, let's start doing merchandising, and you said, okay, I'm gonna take some of this money? Or did you, were you like, fuck, what am I gonna do? Let's start doing merchandise and just um, no. shoot like a Hail Mary. And nah. to oh, no, no. Yeah. See, I'm in the market. Yeah. So so I see the people. I see see what they want. Uh, I, I'll give you one example. I, I started with keychains. Right. They see those little keychains and they go, oh, those are for babies? I'm like, no, man, those are for your car. <laughs> right. But I heard that about 50 times right. and I said... But I'm gonna make some for babies. Yeah. Now we got the baby trunks, baby bros, baby gloves. That's our number one selling product of all time. Isn't? Over maybe half a million just on that one product. Wow. And and it's just being in tune with the customer, listening to the market, seeing seeing what they want. I've seen, and I wouldn't I would never pretend to say you know you a t-shirt business, but I've seen I've seen uh, guys. I've, I've I've had good friends as well as just acquaintances that t-shirts. They wanted to put out T-shirts and stuff, and I've seen them last X amount of years and boom, nothing. Uh, I've seen them start up and go down and fit, you know. Uh, it's not an easy market, bro. Oh, no. To, 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 you know, and and I say this, yeah, put it to music. You might get a hit record, right? That one record, that was a hit. I mean, one hit wonders we heard of. They put out other records. Mm -hmm. It was shit. So to continuously... 
uh, come up with ideas and come up with something. You've got to, would you say you have to be knee deep into that market, bro? You have to, you have to, is that for babies? Ah, babies. I done heard it 50 times. We need baby shit. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. so, uh, how imperative is it to, to always, I would call it, keep your ear to the street in order to keep replicating right. success? You see, but I, I'm in it. I'm, I'm in it. In so, the street. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, I'm not going to call no names out, but it's not like somebody else coming into the, you know, you ain't lived the struggle. You ain't, you ain't been where we've been. You, you're not here when, when we only sell $50, you know. I'm there regardless. I used to go to sparring shows. Like, I don't give a damn. There's a group. How important is that, bro? How important is it to go rather you make $50 or no dollars? Hey, when you love it, see, the interaction with the people, they're, they're your people. Right. So, it don't matter. Because sometimes I've gone to a well, show. What I'm saying is, is the importance of being seen and being on the oh. scene, being there regardless. Yeah, yeah. How important would you say? It's critical. It's coming to the point where I don't want, I want the promoter to be like, it ain't a show of Pueblo in here. You know, and I have promoters, uh, force train that that call us, and we can go set up for free. Some of them charge fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. You know, and I know that they need that money for for flyers, for posters. But I wanted to get it to the point where El Tigre Promotions says, "Hey Juan, we got a show. Come on down." You know, Mario Davila. Hey Juan, I don't know what you got on your schedule, but pencil me in. I want you at this show, no charge. Just come on down. And that's where I wanted to get to, to so, a point. So let me, let me ask you this. As far as the business aspect of it, are those shows, are the shows, is, are the shows more branding or is that actual your revenue? Right? Oh, yeah, that's the revenue drive. That's the revenue yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. All of it, is. Yeah. Revenue, branding, everything. everything. The whole and, and you see, the thing is, is that you don't even have to make a lot. That's what I mean. It, yeah, you know, like, it, it's crazy because, you know, a little couple, $100, and it's like, when you don't go blow it, like, dang, bro, and, that's 25% uh, of the next gym we got yeah. coming up. Boom. You know? Yeah. Like, not only that, it's branding, so then they go to the website, right. soloboxing.com or mybabyboxing.com, and they can go online and order the same products. So that that's a, you know, I told my, my brother, I don't care if we don't sell a dollar, we just need to be there and make that's our what presence. I was it's so funny, and I hope, I hope, you know, I hope the people that are watching, I have other people from, from, from the other shows that watch. And this is such a common denominator when it comes to business. And it doesn't matter what fucking business it is. You got to be able to go through the shit and go through those trenches. Because through those trenches is where you find your loyal base. Mm -hmm. The people that will look back and say, man, I remember when he just had you changed. Or, you know, and people want to rob themselves of that experience. And you have to welcome it. You have to be able to go to events. You know, I, I, you know, I have the food truck. I have to be able to go to an event and know that, fuck, maybe I'll do, I'll do 10, 10 tickets. But the exposure, the opportunity, the building of the relationships, the putting in your, 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 your work, and that's what you have exhibited, you know, from what I've learned, not only through watching you at the shows, seeing your brand uh, grow as it is, but now sitting down talking to you, you know, I, I keep telling people there's no fucking secret to success. Like, there isn't. Yeah. It's just doing the fucking work and going out and... and Everybody thinks you get blessed. Yeah, right? Somebody yeah. came along and said, yeah, you get to come in. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, you, you know, I did, you know, you woke up with, I, you know, I woke up with a small fortune, or you woke up with a small fortune, or that these fucking bills just magically pay for themselves, or the plane tickets yeah. just pay, pay for themselves, yeah. or the manufacturer, you know, that you wake up every morning with, uh, 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 you, and you walk into your magical room of merchandise, and you just, yeah, nah. no one fucking understands all the fucking work that goes on behind the scenes, and that's why I said, in the front, it's... I want to. I want to. I want to have an impact, and that's what you know. That's what we. That's the, that's that's our platform. Right. But no one sees everything that goes on to put ourselves in that position. Right. Right. The building of the relationships, going doing the fucking shows, not always fucking making money, traveling to Mexico, not you know, not knowing, you know, having to listen fifty times, baby stuff. Baby. Oh, okay. Boom. You know, and and going through that process. And what I'm trying to get at is, people want to fucking rob themselves of those op the, of those opportunities and that process. And when they do, and they're 
don't see the success, they wonder why. Right, right. Nah, yeah. nah, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a human being just like anyone else. You have two arms, two eyes, two legs. You, you breathe the same air. You, 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 you didn't graduate from Harvard, did you? I didn't even graduate high school. Right. You know, you, you're, you know you're, you're, not a, you're not a world champion, right? right, right. But, to hear, but to hear, hey, this is why I tell people tune out social media because, right. and if somebody wants to all give her time, yes, I'll come to the understand, unfriend their ass. Because here's the thing. Why well, is Mexican? He ain't supposed to be able to do none of this, right? Right. And I'm sure he's faced racism and prejudice and all that shit, and this man's successful. Right. So, so not to invoke that, but seriously, right. you, right. Hispanic guy, and we know his families ain't popular right now with the president. <laughs> but, but right, yeah. you get up every day, yeah. stay that shit down, and be like, okay, that's just another roadblock. I got to get around that shit. Where others. Put that roadblock and be the reason they, they, they quit, they stop, or whatever. The end, and, and not only, not only is the roadblock. The I roadblock, haven't got my white car, by the way. Nobody sent me that shit in the The, the roadblock are what actually make you successful yeah. because of the growth and the knowledge and the experience that you gain from it. You, you. It, Man, it, in the two years you had this gym, you bought this gym from uh, what you call it. How many people walk through this that you've seen? Now I can include on my phone, on my text messages, that, that social media. Walk through that door. You the one. I don't want to be like Clint. All right. You the guy? Yeah. All right, I'm here. I'm, I'm transferring it to, to my business. You know what this guy did? Yeah, exactly. I didn't do it. You know what this guy did? Let me tell you something. I never. From the day he walked out of prison to my gym two years later, uh, two weeks after, I've never had to check and see if he was running. I've never had to check if something came up. I didn't have to see if he went to the gym. He went to the gym all the way to now. Five and no four no as a professional, and I've ne I'm never looking for him. Hey son, I need you at such and such. We sparring today. We sparring at noon with uh, the state guy who beat the uh, trouble them two times at the next fight up. Okay. He'll be here to spark. In fact, I've had to say, too, slow down, son. Burn yourself out. He'll call me, Coach uh, Bud, gonna be in Colorado. He say, come up here. So I, I, I'm flying out. I'm going to Colorado. Well, I can't buy you that. Get your ass to, to, to Colorado. You know, uh, if Bobby calls me, hey, uh, I can give such and such. Can, can he work with Regis for a couple weeks? Absolutely. I don't have to go. I don't have to be that. I don't have to know. So are you willing to do that? No. You think I'm going to just bless you with the words. Right. That ain't how this shit works, man. This this guy. This, there some fairy dust that you. Right. And I get that <laughs> constantly, bro. And I'm like, y'all have no clue. And then the flip side to that is everybody who don't understand why he's successful. And I tell them, just don't even listen to that shit. Because they just don't know, bro. They don't understand what you're doing. But, so... Same thing with you. You know, you got the roadblocks. You got the, these guys think they're going to come in here. I'm going to open the door because I'm Derek who did this. And I'm going to teach him how to fight like that. Oh, I could teach you. Yeah. Can you learn? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can learn, you know. And that's and I'm sure every successful trainer, not putting myself on the, on the level of anybody training-wise. Because, you know. But all the great trainers locally uh, that we know of professionally, I'm sure they all had the same thing. How many times do we see world champions, right? Shit goes bad and they go to the next top dog yeah. and and they say, okay, I need your sprinkles. And they, they world champions. And you go over there and sometimes it works out. More times than not, it don't. Mm -hmm. You know, they go over there and you're like, well, damn. Case in point, Manuel Stewart. Manuel Stewart, one of the greatest of all time in my, in my, in my estimation, matter of fact, Next day, they fought you probably the best. Yeah. I watched Jermaine tell go to Man Stewart. I said, well, shit. You know, this ought to work out. Man, Jermaine Taylor looked like horse oh, shit. Every time he fought with it, you know why? It takes more than that to, to be successful as a fighter. It's got to be a fit, got to be a plug. And, 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 and these guys think you're going to come in. And that's, the, that's one of the goats. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And it didn't fit because what, what was your strength as a fighter? 
may not fit, may not do. Are you gonna do? It? Or it may be because that man was asking you to do shit you wasn't willing to do because you don't made it to the top of the hill. I ain't got to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna work, man. It's not gonna work. The roadblocks are there all the time. You know, I bullshit you not, man. This is true story. There's professional fighters here in Houston, winning fighters that done walk through that door. Coach, I'm not happy with my coach. You the man. And I'll say no. For two reasons. You're never gonna get me in Houston, Texas being labeled as a, a, a taking people's fighters. That's never gonna happen. I've never trained a fighter without calling their coach or having make sure they talk to them. But I don't know if I can help you, man. I don't know, you know, this may not be the move. Are you sure? Because you at this point of success with a guy, maybe you need to rethink your position, son. Because what you're telling me ain't working, well, hell, I ain't going to do that for you neither. You know, I've, I've watched the money walk out, bro. Parameters. Yeah. Parameters, man. And, they, and, 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 and guess what? They walked out that door the same way they came in. I was rooting for them, and I'm still rooting for them. Publicly. Publicly. I tell everybody that comes through this door that we talk to, I tell them if I'm rooting for them, if I'm a fan, if I'm whatever, and, and, and I mean that with every beat of my heart, bro. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't, bro. Mm -hmm. We would sit here and talk box and have fun and all that, but I, you know, I, I don't care if this guy wrecks on the way home. But, but when I tell a guy, man, I'm rooting for you, man, uh, all these coaches, if I see these coaches, you know, I don't see too many coaches give coaches props like I do. Mm -hmm. And I don't have personal relationships with some of these dudes. I'm a boxing guy, so I know who can fight and who can't. I know who's winning off heart and who's winning off skill. Mm. I can see these things. And I'll publicly say, Coach such and such is the man. Coach such and such is the man. This coach, man, this guy's, you know, because I really mean it, bro. Mm. I, I don't get nothing from nobody. You gotta have those parameters, bro. Those roadblocks will be there. And, and if you don't have something to stand on, bro, you you doing your thing because of what you wanted to do, the community outreach. I just asked this man, what's it, you know, half ass expecting, well, okay, when you want your world champion, though, right? He said, I don't know. I ain't, that ain't what I'm in this for. Mm -hmm. Gotta respect it. You got to respect it, man. This, uh, I'm learning stuff from y'all, both of y'all, man, talking with him all the time. He telling me the, the, the entre entrepreneurial stuff, and I, I try to, I try to transliterate it to me. And what I'm seeing about what y'all saying is, yeah, but you think I could do for you what this guy did? Right. You're, you're totally discounting what he did. Hmm. Right. That's not going to work, exactly. bro. You got to get up and go to the shows, ready yourself, fifty dollars worth of merchandise, or nothing, mm -hmm. or nothing. Mm -hmm. This is our thirty-first show. We started this thing in January, right? Yeah. Every weekend we did a show over step two, right? Mm -hmm. Two shows, and he didn't like it. I didn't like it neither. But it's easy because we're in here talking boxing, and we, and we got you in here. I'm learning something, so uh, it's nothing for me to get up and go talk boxing for a couple of hours. But the consistency, and then like you just said, LT Gray called me up for their last show. Say, man, y'all want to do a live remote from the show? Yeah. Hell yeah. We never did a live remote never before. And, and yes, it was a learning experience. I see you where we messed up, where we didn't mess up, so the next one will be better and smoother. But that's what we in it for. Mm -hmm. I love the Houston boxing scene. I love the, the boxers. I love the coaches. I love everybody that's successful. To me, LT Gray and them next fight boys do hell of a show, man. Way better, way better than some ESPN shows I was involved in in New Orleans. They way top notch than that, and 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 you know they they were only two, you know. So they came out of left field. Yeah, bro. And, and, and you know we go to all the shows. We don't discriminate. We, even as far as you know, little Hobbs or and and the production, the production, yeah, and man. it's like you can you know who's in it because they love it. And who's trying to squeeze out every last nickel they can get out of it, you know? Yeah. And and you can see it in the production, you know? You can, yeah. you can see it on the caliber of fights that they're putting on. Uh, just things like that, bro. And it's like, I love it. So so those guys, like, I'm working on something for next fight. I'm not going to say what it is. But I did something for uh, Iftiga. You know, we made them some, some VIP lanyards. You know, try to 
figure out a way to be a value mm. to them more than a little hundred dollars that I can give you for a booth. You know what I can do a hundred dollars for you? Like, man, I, I can make sure all your VIP tables got a little gift with you know with, with your brand. Right. That's gonna carry you over more than what are you gonna do with a hundred? Go to IHOP? Right. You know, for three right. people? Like, nah, bro. I'm more valued than picture. that. Yeah. Big picture. Yeah. I'll tell you, I got one of them because I had to get mine to get in. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but uh you know, despite me not know, I know, I know. Uh, damn, I just went black. Forrest, I know Forrest less than I know you, so that that's how much I know him. But when I sit back and look and see what they got going on, I say, well, it's got to be for a good reason. It's got to be for the reasons you do it, right? Mm -hmm. So when he's sitting there telling me, man, look, I just want these fighters to have an opportunity. Look, does he want to cash out at some point? As far as if they make something, hopefully I get my piece. That's thing. fair, here's that's the, fair. But sure. the work them boys put in, him and I call Joe sure. the Dutchman. Yeah. Him and the Dutchman. I, last night I watched the Dutchman hop in that fucking ring. This is a lawyer now, right? In, in a society, you know, lawyer. I watched the Dutchman jump in that ring and wipe the fucking canvas every time them boys were slipping like that. As soon as he seen it, I said, look at Joe. Joe jumping in there. They could have had a runner doing some shit like that. But Joe's, Joe told me he puts on his uh, his phone, his steps, every fight. Mm -hmm. He's walking 10,000 steps or something, sticking and moving. Those guys are working towards something. So my point is, I can appreciate it as an outsider looking and going, I like these guys. Why is my guy? But here, here, here's the thing. Hell, finds over my guy. These are my guys. And look what they doing, man. Yeah. What he knows, what Joe knows, what I know is that the payoff, right? Mm -hmm. The payoff, it's automatic. It's autom It's automatic. When you're doing, when you're doing, when you're adding value, mm -hmm. and you're focusing on doing the right thing, and doing the things that need to be done. It's 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 part of the equation. It's like if you walk outside, you take a deep breath. You're gonna breathe in good air. Yeah, go out there. You go out and you add value. That good that good that payoff is. It, you don't even. That's why you don't think about. It. That's why you never think about it, right? One because what's your payoff? You already said well, I don't need fancy cars. I don't need this, that, or another. So your payoff is our. When you're when you're adding this much value to the world and your expectation of payoff is down here, mm -hmm. well that shit's met every morning you wake up. And even 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 if and even if that payoff even if you you have a higher payoff, right? You add more value, it's still gonna get met. The payoff is automatic. It, it, it depends on what scale you are, like Joe and uh, Joe and Forrest. Right, they're putting on these big shows and they're investing a lot of money and by their accounts they lose money every every month but that's because their payoff is a little bit higher mm -hmm. you know they, they they but they understand that they're not they're not focused on the payoff they're not going to nickel and dime mm -hmm. because the payoff's higher the value's got to be higher mm -hmm. and you can't nickel and dime great value mm -hmm. right then they become what great value Floyd, it's a great value. Low budget, no budget, something. No. And I'm gonna tell you, I, 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 that's my moment. Right? <laughs> what are you, a great value, Floyd? The and 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 recently here, and I've been in Houston boxing for years now. You know, when you think local fights, you think next fight up and LT great promotion. When you think of uh 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 branding and 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 uh, equipment and and and, and all that. Pueblo, they there every time you're there. So, so a newcomer, you know, newcomers come and go, or they have a a peep that maybe yeah. ain't really worth doing it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and so you see that you see who's making those moves, man. And and, and, and like you, no shot against nobody else For doing sure. nothing, man. That ain't that ain't my point. If you feel that way, well, that's your situation. Mm -hmm. But you look at these guys, man, and and and. Man, it's like clockwork, man. They 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 own it. They fighting, uh, and I have no outside of the few times fighting on some of these guys' shows from a from a from a trainer and, and fighter. That's that's all. I, I'm not in business with none of them. Mm -hmm. So 
it's it's easy for me to sit back and go, hey man, those guys is, is, is making an impact, man. They doing things. Hey, when you're at the fight, how much time? Oh, not how much time, but how much of the fight do you actually get to enjoy? About ten percent, if that. If that, because I'm always seeing, you know, what needs to be fixed, dealing with the customer, talking to them, making that that relation, and that's what I'm about. But then, you know, you hear the screams, and you, know, you turn around, <laughs> or or you see some, you know, pushing at the at the wings or something. So you're like, nah, I, hey, remind me when when this guy goes up, I gotta watch that, you know, so something like that. But no, I don't have that luxury. They say, oh, you going to the Canelo fight? Yeah, I'm going to the Canelo fight, but I'm gonna be out on the sidewalk. I got my little stand out there, and we're gonna be getting a hustle on. I, I don't get the luxury of I was at the Mikey Garcia Spence fight. Oh. Bro, I had I didn't I didn't get to set up. I had a dang uh what is it, uh, one of those laundry uh, baskets full of keychains. And I told my boy, my boy goes, "Hey man, the tickets are only like 60, 80 bucks. We can go in there and watch this fight." I said, "Yeah, bro, but then we got to run out and get in position when these people rush out." We go out there, bro. We I'm not going to say how much, but we we slang a bunch of keychains and uh this one guy is like it's like Coach Juan and I'm like, yeah, man. He goes, man, you used to train me back in Houston. I'm like, damn, that's a long time ago. He goes like this. He goes, what happened to you? I'm like, why, man? Like, he was, you know, downplaying me. I'm like, I'm not worried about it. Two days later, we're jumping to Columbia to go do our tournament. You know, oh. we, we, we go spend 7000 bless these children with championship belts. Oh, I've seen the pep yeah. belts, man. I've seen the belts. Yeah, bro. I was like, hey, that's another subject. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> when I see all these belts, I'm like, I always tell my partner, we're in the wrong business. You know, it's like, yeah. I see all these belts. But yeah, bro, we, we went down to Columbia and children that usually, if they even get a paper certificate, you right. know, they're happy. Right. I, Several boxing matches in between the rounds, like the shoes would rip apart, and they're they're taping the shoes back up. So for them to get a little championship belt, that's real deep. You know, it's like it's everything. Right. You know, and it's like that's what fills me up. So he's over here looking down on me, like you know, I'm over here like selling hot dogs. Hey, hot dog man, gotta eat too. The popcorn man gotta eat too. We all, you know, gotta do what we gotta do to eat. But then look at the payoff. Right. You going back to your nine to five, or I don't know, right. like most people. They just didn't understand. That's all. And then the next day, we're doing what we got to do. And it's it's great that you recognize that. In the kid, might it didn't even mean nothing, right. man. You just a dumb young guy. But you understand. Ah, oh, man, I'm good, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. So, and then then you go make a world of a difference down in Columbia, and and, and you know, kid getting a, a, a title belt that he'll have till he's an old man telling his grandson, "Boy, I used to fight." Right? That's a, that's a beautiful thing, and, and and I'm proof positive that I've seen you've been you've been doing it at every level of the game, man. The the amateur shows, man, in there sweating, just like I'm sweating. You know uh, that uh, ah, man, the people boxing, bro. I, I I never knew that, man, but I, I love it a lot. And you got to you got to uh, like I told man, man, I don't know what you mean about. Brandon, what the fuck is that? And again, like y'all, whoever that guy is, y'all talking about. Y'all sitting there going, how the hell I'm talking about? I don't know who the fuck y'all talking about. But that may not, not be my thing. And now that y'all gave me the game, I'm going to go check it out. Yeah. But uh, my Brandon is just kicking ass and teaching motherfuckers to fight and tell you where it came from. You know, I, that's how I'm going to live, bro. You know, when Quentin goes to develop a fighter, and hopefully he develops several fighters and they become something, you know, uh, uh, when he becomes whatever his watermark is, you know, that's my brand. And I look at it like, all right, see, we did that, you know, and, and I told my wife one time, you know, uh, I'm going to live, man, because these boys is going to say, let me tell you about this crazy Irish motherfucker from New Orleans who talks funny, who taught me how to fight. This is what he said. You know, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. That's what made me proud of yeah. everything right there. I'm like, and I look back, and like I said, my uncle, he's 70 this year, man. And, you know, God willing, inshallah, he lives 50 more years. But when he's gone, all three of his boys is passed on, bro. So it's really, in my family family, I'm the last of the Mohicans. Puerto Ricans. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the Mohicans <laughs> teaching this boxing from our family. Mm -hmm. So and, he, just, he just made me think of something. I, I, I've never heard stuff before, so this, I'm going to take credit for this. Legacy, legacy is what keeps you li will keep you living when you're dead. Absolutely. Branding is what keeps you living when you're living. Mm, I hear you, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, 
Okay. But, but I take y'all Brandon talking, I'm like, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand in my own way. So I'm all for it while you're living. Yeah. <laughs> Do it yeah. while you're living too. Brandon, but Brandon keep you living while you're living. living Legacy man. keep you living on the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, man. I, I, I'm trading with that. Yeah. Gary Vee tomorrow that one. Yeah, <laughs> that, uh, yeah that's cool. Yeah. About. So last night, man. Yeah, that's what I was trying to lead into. Last night, that uh, Another sold out crowd. Man. I mean, when when the people are jammed back up to your to your booth, that's when you know it was a good show. It's pop. Yeah. You know, because I've been there when, when it was, you know, starting off. And now it's like, hey, Ford's got to think about a, and I think, a, a yeah. bigger venue because yeah. it's getting... And this is relatively capacity. fast, right? They haven't been... Uh, two years. Yeah, yeah. They haven't... They relatively fast. They bust some moves, man. But again, the proof is in the pudding, man. When you put out good fights, consistently good shows. It's, it's, it, we fought in Beaumont. I think that's the only show they did outside of Houston. If they told me that, I don't want to put out misinformation. But, bro, bell time was seven, seven o'clock bell rung. I told the dustman, I said, "Say, bro, I love this shit. I'm gonna be home in bed by uh, eleven midnight or whatever." So we fought early. I said, "Uh, man, I ain't never been to a show like that." And I'm gonna tell you, LT Perk runs their thing sharp like that. When the bell time, you know, they ain't far off. The bell rings, it's going through, and that, that means you got a crew, mm -hmm. whoever they are. Yeah. And like I told you, with Joe jumping that ring, wiping the mask down, they yeah. on top of their thing, bro. Man, they, Joe was putting up the chairs when I left. Yeah, dude. <laughs> them dudes, them dudes, but uh, I was able to watch live, I wasn't there. Uh, uh, one, of, one of my favorite local fighters, anyway, but a podcast favorite, Jesse Garcia got back yeah. in action. Uh, fifth round TKO over Christian Guido. Now, when I seen that kid, he was fighting. Let me tell you, man. We was on a show with that kid. I can't remember what show. That Guido kid. He's an Italian fighting out of uh, Argentina. I would have never guessed. Oh, I thought he was Argentinian. Nah, he's a, he's an Italian who adopted that country or something like that. I heard the thing, but that's an awkward dude, bro. And that dude could fight, man. And a lot of times, you know, as trainers, you know, sleepers, you know, just don't let his record fool you, man. The guy can, and he's a, he's a slippery, slippery guy, man. And I knew Jesse, uh, you know, coming off this layoff, I said, man, this ain't gonna be no cakewalk. This dude's gonna come to try to win. And Jesse, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. I gave Jesse every round, bro. He kept that fight going. He was backing that kid up because he was a slick move. Mm -hmm. Being out of Argentina, that makes sense if he's learning how to fight like. Like them, you know, and 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 he, he's a footwork guy, and I tell you, Jesse would put his ass in that corner and bang away, man. I was very impressed uh, with his performance being laid off since I think uh, it's been a while. Last year, last year, man. Uh, but yeah, shout out Jesse. That's a uh, fifth round uh, TKO over uh, Christian Guido. I think that takes Jesse up to seven and zero now. Uh, it's a good, uh, he's a buzzsaw, man. He's a good. He, he's a fan friendly fighter, man. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, wish him nothing but the but the best. Uh, Ooh, uh, trouble, trouble. Ibagwe. I never say his name right, but I think it's Ibagwe. Ibagwe. Uh, got back on the winning side. Uh, what do you think of that fight? I tell you, man. This is as a trainer. I seen the kid was tall, lanky. And he was five and up. Now five and up doesn't mean much except that the kid might don't know how to lose yet, mm -hmm. which can make a interesting fight. Coming off the two fights with uh, Ibagwe had with uh, the kid was coming by today, and he dropped decisions to this kid. Uh, I said, man, they picking a hell of a, a, a guy. So let me try to look at my. I found one thing on this guy. And when I tell you this kid is awkward, it's a uh, He called himself the sexy Armenian. Armenian, bro. He was long lanky, and I mean, you couldn't. Even, I couldn't even call it a style. I don't know what kind of style of fighting he was doing. He was just busy fighting. Yeah. And uh, I said, man, this can make for an awkward fight. And I tell you, man, uh, trouble came through in the end. I think I had it five to. Uh, six to two, uh, maybe five three, but basically just off 
when Mbagwe would take off rounds. Because yeah. it's such a ugly fight, man, and a lot of wrestling, rough house tactics. And a lot uh, of changes. A lot of exchanges. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, Mbagwe landed the heavier blows, clearly. Yeah. But that boy landed some shots on Ibagwe and he was able to walk through him, you know, uh, not yeah, he hurt. was taking those shots, because he was. He was hammering him through. Right? Yeah. Break I would have liked to see I would have liked to see Ralph uh, shoot a little jab a little more to give him some space to land them shots and not get hit by that. But, again, that's just, you know, I don't know what's going on in the corner. And, and, and the other guy just kept, you know, bending over. Oh, so awkward. Dude. Yeah, very awkward. So, but, man, I like the, the brother because, man, he had the the fans, bro. Yeah. It, it gives you a different energy. Every time I've seen him, man, yeah, the house is packed for that guy. Yeah. I believe yeah. he's a Nigerian descent. Uh, yeah. They come out, man. Yeah. They come out. So that's valuable, man. And, and, and when, a, when a fighter, the chips is down, man. Because even in his two defeats, uh, he was fighting, man. He was fighting back, and, and that crowd was willing him, yeah. willing him on, man. But I, he clearly won that fight. Uh, but again, if I remember, I heard the the, the, the scores. Somebody had it even. Mm-hmm. Somebody had it by way by like up by a round. Yeah. And I believe Ray had it yeah. about like how I seen it. Uh, uh, he had him winning by three or four rounds, but. That's what can happen, man. When you fight an awkward dude, you know, a judge is looking, man, and he's saying you're not having your way with this guy. Mm-hmm. This guy's putting up a fight, and and those things can happen, man. But I, I thought he he clearly got back on the winning side, and, and I was happy for him because uh, I know that last I was there, we was on that show. Both our guys was on that show. That last one he lost, and he took that kind of rough. He was. He See, was but the, that's two fights you just mentioned. That the promoter could have very easily said, you know what, let's give him a little, little something easier. Right. But they put in something interesting, and then that's the payback because the people know it's like, man, they, yes, they support the fighter and they want to be there. Right. But man, we don't want them to see like just like throw a jab and the guy falls down, bro. Like, oh, oh, and and, and, and Ibakwe has to look at himself this morning, going, yeah, see. I belong there because this guy was here to fight, right. undefeated fighter. I don't mm-hmm. know his amateur background, really doesn't matter because he didn't know how to lose and he wasn't trying to lose. Mm-hmm. He was there fighting, he was putting up problems and Ralph handled it, uh, you know, weather the storm every time he, he started some shit. So I'm glad to see him get back on a, a winning track. But let me talk about my my home, Who's that, uh, Jericho, man, that New Orleans boy, Ain't man. No he, he, uh, this was a real fight, man. This was, to me, uh, a, a big test, right? This kid was uh, 38 and 6 or something like that. I, I think he was ranked. He might even fought for a, 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 a title. one of those titles before this uh, Victor Terrazas. That's how you say it? Mm-hmm. Terrazas? Mm-hmm. That guy can fight, man. So I, I said, okay. Uh, and I haven't seen all Jericho's fights, but I'm a fan since he's an amateur. And uh, I said, okay, this is this is your first test. We're putting you to the to the Lions to s- for that next one. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, Jericho came through like hey, he was flying colors, man. I tell you, I, I seen I seen at the wedding, 144 pounds. He was in shape. Two weeks before this, we was sparring at Savannah's, and I seen him, and he looked in immaculate shape. And I said, you in shape, man? Yeah, coach. I said, yeah, all right. Uh, supremely confident. If he, if he was wary of anything, it didn't show. Uh, I was, I was, I was, I was. You know, I thought to, uh, Terrazzo was sitting on the ropes a little bit, so he could save up mm. to the end of Buss's Buss's wig at the end, and he tried. Yeah. And that seven round, he he started banging back, and he had a wicked uh, left hook to that liver man. He was trying to catch a. Mm. Uh, uh, Jericho with, but I tell you, man, I I thought personally, I thought Jericho won every second of every round, man. Uh, I was I was proud to see he did that, man. I had him win an eight nothing, and uh, and I'm not taking nothing from him. that guy. Was the test I thought he was gonna be? That guy was no, there to he win. Was, he was there. To he fight. was there to win and fight, and Jericho and he was looking didn't for allow. Him. He was looking for a shot. Jericho just couldn't, wouldn't give it to him. When he came he, out when he was up against the rope. Jericho put his, his head in his chest and and, and and go for them liver shots, touching both, sides. both and, sides. And I tell you, uh, Jericho he fought smart, man. 
he came out uh, using that jab early, and uh, cause I I know about midway through the first round, I'm like son, throw that right hand, man, let him know it's something out there in case he gets brave, you know. And I think towards the first, he threw a couple hooks or something, and then maybe a little right hand, but he came right back in that second round, boom, and started putting his hands on him, man. And uh, yeah, I was proud, man. I I said there you go, man, because this I I feel was a real a real true test. You know, this this they didn't they didn't match him easy at all, man. This this guy was uh, uh better win. He knew how to win. He knew how to fight. Uh yeah, I liked it man. That was a hell of a main event. I wish I'd have been. I knew we had to get up here early, but the workaholic, he was dead and still came on. Hey, uh, shout out to my wife for waking me up because I had the snooze oh. and she she woke me up. I'm like, <gasps> my daughter brought my grandbaby last night. I was gonna get her today, and then Mama told me no. I said, well, I'm gonna get her today. And then Mama told me, no, I told her bring her tonight, and we don't get no sleep when so she's there. It's different, <laughs> you know. She wants to stay up all night, look what's going around, and and so I didn't get to bed till late, but but I was watching them fights anyway. Uh, so so Jericho won the ABF. 140 pound, 147 pound title that Robert was fighting for, right? Yeah. Uh, well, there, uh, there, uh, there's two different ones. Yeah, I don't. One regional and one. Right. I don't know which one it is, but shout out to Clara. Claire. 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 Claire, Claire Burke. Burke. Claire Burke. It's an Irish name. I wonder if that's a real. Yeah. Got my favorite gangster, Jimmy Burke. You know who that is? No, everybody. That, uh. Got a. No, New York. I'd say Chicago. No, he's not in New York. But, but, uh, yeah, I like her, man. She was live the whole time. I was, I was talking. She was talking back. She's ringside, and uh, I gotta tell Quentin, I heard him behind Claire coaching Old Trouble the whole time, man. He was, and, and I gotta say, I was agreeing with everything I was thinking. He was telling him to do, man, and and. Uh, I'm sure he wasn't paying attention to nobody but his corner, but but uh, yeah, it was a fun fight. It was a fun night of fights, man. I wish I'd have been there because uh, it looked. I didn't get to see Pablo Cruz. I wanted to see how he did. Did you yeah. pay attention? Did he? Uh, how did he show? He, did he win? His fight. Oh yeah, goes. definitely won. Yeah, his fight goes in that too. And that that Marcus guy was fighting that. And top. I think that was a rematch too. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was a rematch. From the last uh, fight. Yeah, uh, I don't know when, when was it, but it was, uh, I heard it was a rematch, and I believe he, the other guy was from Nicaragua. Right. And, and, and shoot, he he brought it. He, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, man, it seemed to be a good card. And I tell you, man, uh, Jericho being a Houston transplant out of New Orleans like me, uh, I'm rooting for him every step of the way. You know, yeah. I consider myself a Houstonian with a New Orleans accent, but mm. that uh. I was glad to see him come through there and kind even me, I expect now, okay, let's go on, y'all move him up, let's go on and attack the world rankings, man, and, and, and start climbing, you know, and hopefully uh, Joe and uh, Farrell keep navigating him. Uh, yeah, and you know this is crazy that this is just recently because you know I've seen promoters come and go in, in, in 20 years from you know lots of different promoters, it ain't easy. And no. you would think that, you know, when I got invited to my first show down in Aransas Pass, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, I don't even make no money in Houston. Right. How the hell am I going to make money in Aransas Pass? Uh, there was like 3,000 people there. Uh -huh. and, and, and the whole town was there showing mad love. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to miss a, a, a yeah. show again. But because I've seen so many promoters lose their ass, bro. And they're like, you ever think about being a promoter? Hell no. Right. Like, nah. I don't might only make fifty bucks, but I'm gonna make fifty bucks. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. right. You ain't always gonna lose ten thousand. Yeah, their good night is like, how much did we lose? Oh, not that bad. Okay, we're good. You yeah, know? man, so, that's a different level of yeah. business, right? So there. we're very for well, the fighters especially, and, and us as a vendor, uh, but the fighters especially, man, are very fortunate they actually got someone who's building up this uh, market again. Because for a long time we had to go to San Antonio, down to Laredo, uh, up Which to Dallas. Which is crazy. I've been a huge boxing man, but you know it is what it is. It, sometimes it, it's so busy that that we just got other things to do. Right. You know, I don't right. know if I could have 400 members in in a in a town like Houston. Right. And Wichita Falls is the only thing no. in town. You know, right. so it's automatic. But so we got some people that are actually investing into it and and taking the the hard way up. 
that that lets us know that that is going to be around for a while. Right. Versus these people that try to go up the easy way when those roots are not planted right, it's just not going to last. Right. You know. So I tell you, and the fighters need to understand, man. Uh, these promoters, and, and I'm never on the side of the promoter. I'm a fight guy, but that's a hard job, man. I mean, you you, you got a lot of money on the line, but you know, if I Fighters fall out, fighters don't stick to their commitments. It don't matter about that paper you sign. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they call injury and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a big juggling. It's a big juggling process, man. Them guys trying to put these shows on and keep the fighters, uh, you know, keep about, a good show. Let's talk about the big business guys. Like, what do you think about that? Uh, what were your thoughts when uh, you saw Ruiz win the fight? Oh, wow, bro. I, I was coming back from a show. Uh -huh. I was tired. I barely caught the two girls that fought before, and I'm falling asleep. I'm like, man, let's just hurry up and watch this guy get knocked out. Uh -huh. And uh, now, did, my, you, did you know of him beforehand? Nope. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. I only knew a little bit about him because uh, he was with Freddie Roach for a little right. bit. That's the only thing I knew. But the physique, you know, I was like, yeah, it's whatever. And my, my wife was actually doing like a pedicure, bro, and, and uh, I'm falling asleep. And when I seen him, you know, he got dropped. I'm like, okay, it's about to be over. He gets up and knocks him down, bro. And she's like, what, did I hurt you? I'm like, no, look. And it's like, bro, it felt like I was watching Rocky, bro, like at nine years old. And my crazy head, I'm thinking I'm the only one. Nah, man, every boxing fan was jumping out of right, their seat yeah. just excited, bro. Yeah, especially the Mexican community, man. Yeah, they bro. Have to have a Mexican heavyweight. Yeah, bro. We ain't never had one. Yeah. Hey, bro. I didn't even I didn't even really connect with him as a because I never even heard him speak. Yeah. But just looking at him, he's not supposed to win. Right. And so when that guy can come back from something like that and, and knock this, I was happy. Just hey, you just knocked him down. That's cool. Yeah. Even if he knocks you out, you just earned your you just earned your purse. Yeah, right. man. That little excitement that that right. got out of me. Hey, man, that was worth it. Yeah. And then for him to finish it, yeah. wow, man, it, it felt like I was watching a. Uh, uh, Ahmed Barrera all over again because yeah. I, I didn't give Barrera no chance in that fight and then ass whooping from round one to all the way to the end and man that was awesome bro I I didn't I didn't know him either I seen him like two three weeks before on uh, ESPN or, or I think it was uh, Fox uh, on TV on the PBC or yeah PBC, uh, yeah yeah uh, having an interview and he had, the whole thing his gimmick was the, the Snickers bar he had all the Snickers bars and then all of a sudden three weeks later they announced the fight with him and uh, and, and Joshua so I was I was I was curious as to see how that was going to turn out and then turns out and wins I think it's uh, I thought it was pretty exciting what do you think about uh, the legal issues as far as uh where the fight's going to be held? Well, it's settled now, so... Are they going to fight, they yeah. fight in uh, Saudi Arabia? Yeah, he already announced it, so they might have just chipped in a little bit more cash and... Well, it, it, it was always really settled, and he was bellyaching to get... Me not knowing them personally, Ruiz was pulling a Triple G for the rematch, trying to milk it for everything he can, all the way to the 11th hour. Now, I did think by them picking Saudi Arabia, which I don't suggest Ruiz and them go out there, but I knew he couldn't get out of it for for boxing reasons, not no other reason. But even then, I knew he was building it. Okay, you making it over here, and my government says it's not a friendly place for us to be. That's really, if, if, as long as Saudi is on the uh, warning list, oh, you can really get out of it. Mm -hmm. Ain't no court in America gonna hold you to doing that. But I don't think Andy gave a damn. I think Andy wanted to make money mm -hmm. and milk it for everything he can get, especially if you're going to bring me over there, yeah. which is not really the... Uh, Optimal spot. Well, it's not really the neutral site like they pretended. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to be a pro Rui, uh, pro uh, yeah, uh, Joshua crowd. And that ain't even my argument because okay. you should have went to O2, man. If you're going to go somewhere, go to O2 with that gate and get you a bigger piece of it. But... Uh, I'm worried about the box. There's no boxing commission. There's no history. Whatever they no placate sense. there is going to be for that specifically. Yeah. Hopefully, because it is the world sanctioning bodies, they will have a good ref there and they will have that. But, you know, just, you know, I've never been a PD guy. I don't know nothing about it. But I do know it gives you an advantage if you're shooting your ass with steroids and shit and, yeah. and, and you know, 
Is Vada going to have a thing over there? Does Vada even, I'm not sure if Vada even knows what they're doing because the way Dillian White tested positive and then come back and same test as though he tested negative with somebody else. So who, who knows what's going yeah. on it? I just was like, man, I want the American, Mexican American champion to fight in America. I mean, be beautiful to fight in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. There's no way Eddie Hearn was going to allow that. Yeah. But, man, let's have our guy here, you know, doing Madison Square or whatever. But I knew that wasn't going to happen. When they were saying, oh, when Josh was, that was just emotions talking. Right. I fought there. He'll probably never fight in America again, man, depending on how this play is out. But uh, I thought... Want? Andy was just building it for yeah. every last thing. And he should, shit. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely. Why aren't you? But You're the beautiful thing about it is that everything that you just brought up don't mean shit if if he he does exactly what he did. It don't matter who's the refs, who's the one thousand percent uh Vada testing, it don't matter. You and you weren't gonna, you didn't beat me with strength last time, it's my skill set. And Andy believes he can win. Yeah. It was never it was never it was never, doubt was never in his face in that first fight throughout the media, throughout the fight, even when he got clipped. Yeah. He looked up at that clown and said, you got me, and got up and said, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, boxing is so, in my world, it's so mental, man. It's so confidence driven. It's so, confidence ain't shit if it's not backed up by knowing. If it's confidence on fluff, fluff will fail. Mm -hmm. and, and and I remind people, Andy Ruiz, and I'm not an Andy guy. I didn't know him before. Yeah. Like everybody said, they know who he was. No. I didn't. Yeah. And he wasn't on my radar. Yeah. And I see him. <laughs> and, and I realized yeah. after, I did watch him beat this big Russian guy. Yeah, like three weeks ago. And I didn't pay attention to it. Really. I was like, that Russian guy just can't fight, right? right? But, so I wasn't one of them guys. Andy Ruiz kicked Edmund Joshua's ass, bro, thoroughly. Yeah. It was two degrees of boxing in there. One guy was top tier fighter, and one guy was a big old guy. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, man. According to him, the only guy, it was a lucky shot. Yeah, that's, yeah. Sent from the guy. I hope he don't believe that. Because Andy. you don't get a lucky shot for seven rounds. Mm -hmm. That's an ass whoop. But, but, but he also did continue to say that Lennox Lewis was. Shit, so. yeah. in, the same, in the same interview, so he's really turning bad. Cause I like Josh. Josh yeah. There was no reason not to like Josh at all, man. But this bullshit. But I seen what it was. Uh, Eddie Hearn. If I don't know if I believe, I don't know how much I can trust. I think Eddie Hearn's a good guy. Like I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying he's a bad. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't. I don't per se think he's a boxing guy. Mm -hmm. You know. But. I seen the interview where he said that the whole beef really is Lennox. When Joshua came out the uh, Olympics gold medal, Lennox wanted to manage him, and Joshua turned it down or whatever. And so Joshua feels that every critique that Lennox has had, oh, which is. what I've seen has been right on the money all the way up to this fight, mm. uh, he took it as a slight. Like he just mad because I didn't go with him. So that's the. That's the, that's the beef I heard out of Eddie Hearn's mouth. Uh, but, yeah, man, that, that, that's strike number one already. If you believe that was lucky punches, that's strike number one. That means whoever you listening to, that means the home base in here where it's quiet, us three got our champ, we sitting here saying, champ. Awesome. But I believe that's what they did him to get in that fight anyway, because I believe the kid was hurt before that fight, and and I believe he didn't want to get in that ring. Uh -oh. That was his face and all that shit I was reading before that was real, and I believe his team was saying, "Come on, the fat dude, right. what the fuck did oh, that's a On a bad on a bad night, you can whoop right. him. So you hold your belts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if a kid, so if the kid is sitting in there right now doing his weightlifting. And his trainers are saying it was a lucky punch, son. And he believes that? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's strike Ruiz. one. Yeah. That's strike one, man. Does Ruiz, does he need to change anything? Like, you know, his receipt, his receipt and his body, that you know, it's, it's been, has he ever been, been talking about it. No. So does he, does he need to change that? He can't. 
I mean, he ain't gonna change that. Now he could get in a, little, a little bit more conditioning. He'll have a full training camp instead of five weeks. Right. So, so there's definitely gonna. He's it, not gonna look like a statue regardless. Regardless, especially because he's been celebrating. You know, he's been going to Mexico and. That's what I worry about. Yeah. This. And we then, need to cut it. Let's go. That's it. I, I, no way, Andy wasn't hadn't been running or nothing. Like they saying, it's a late start now. For the, I think that's all part of the building and shit. There's yeah, no way that right. kid. I mean, I, it can't happen. I mean, he don't seem like a he, an interview. It ain't like he's the most. Uh, uh, he's just an ass kicker, bro. Like he ain't the most. Uh, I don't think he's a, a, a caught up allergist or whatever. He, I think, I think he can. He's just a man. I can whoop his ass. I whoop his ass. I can whoop his ass again. But surely, he ain't not been training the last say two weeks, three weeks. Surely he been doing whatever. I hope if, so. If it's running on a treadmill, anything, anything because. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Soap Boxing Podcast. We are live on location at the Grind Boxing Academy and Fitness Center located in Katy, Texas. Now, back to the show. Hope you enjoy. I think what, what he accomplished was something tremendous. Uh, above and beyond uh, what the average fighter does. And, and hopefully, he's not sitting at home going, ah, I whooped him, I whooped him again. Yeah. Right? Hopefully that kid's run because he is giving up a hell of a lot of uh, uh, size advantage and he needs to be sharp, you know. Hopefully he is sharp. Because uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, maybe it's just my, uh, I'm not, I'm not it's still a 50-50 fight for me. I think I'm leaning towards Andy and I'm rooting for Andy because it's clear disparity in ability, clear disparity, but I worry about the other stuff, like you said. He went and bought the big house, the big car, nothing wrong with that because he just got an influx of money. Uh, but, you know. Uh, it can be a distraction. I've seen money ruin fighters, man. I saw that big old house he bought, man. A lot less money yeah. ruin fighters. Yeah. That house is going to take a lot of money just to keep up. Yeah. Shit. Well, that's, that may be the reason. Huh. The guy told me one time, he said, what you going to do when you get rich? I said, shit, I don't know. And he was like, first thing you need to do is go get you a lawyer. Uh, 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 tax lawyer, and then a lawyer to watch your tax lawyer, and then a lawyer to watch that lawyer before you do anything. And I said, hmm, it makes sense because when he gets that windfall of money, so 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 let's say it was six million was the purse, half of that goes to Sam, uh, the chunk goes out to whoever. So what you think Ruiz ended up with out of six million dollars? Maybe two and a half, man. Maybe two and a half. Okay. And you went and bought a million dollar home and a, a Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. Now, hopefully him being Mexican and being a car dude, he knows how to get around the, you know, go get the best car for the least amount of money and, and do what he wants with it. But hopefully he said, okay, I'm buying this on the basis of the rematch. So he wasn't going to never not do the rematch, but we need to go get that rematch. And they only want to give me nine, we're going to talk him up to 15. Mm -hmm. Because after 15, he's going to end up with seven, right? Yeah. Right? So hopefully Andy and them did all that right. You know, I don't know. Uh, because, man, that money comes and goes, man. You, all your cousins you didn't know you had and family you didn't know you had. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason that every time they edit her and them say, we doing this and we doing that, and somebody asks you, say, I ain't, I ain't agree to that. That's a good reason to do that. Yeah. Because you want them to be nervous. And when Eddie Hearn we got that, that A-Rab money on the, on the deck, he got to deliver. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Andy being over here saying, man, I ain't going to Saudi Arabia. Put him on the hot seat, man. Yeah. So what do I need to do? I'm sure I'm sure that conversation happened between somebody. Yeah. What do I need to do to make this fight happen, Andy? If it went through the lawyers, through whoever, yeah. what do I need to do? You know, because uh, <laughs> Andy needs to pay that, bro. He needs the payday to enjoy being the world champion. And we know boxing-wise he can win. Mm -hmm. So it's just not being uh, out of shape and being ready to fight. Mm -hmm. And and I'll tell you, man, I can't wait to see him hit ant man in the mouth real hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I was saying earlier, you know, guys start thinking they hurt and they really are. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that comes from lack of uh, uh, confidence, you know. Oh, am I hurt? Am I hurt like I was last time? You know, why he's thinking that, kick his ass. Do we got a date for that fight? Yeah, uh, December 6th or 7th? Uh, it's going to be a good one. Mm -hmm. 
back and forth. Um, who, who, who we got fighting tonight? We have uh, Kovalev. Kovalev and Yard. I know you know nothing about the Yard guy. Nothing. The English guy? Mm -hmm. You seen him before? Mm -hmm. So Yard, Yard, doesn't, Yard doesn't do anything. I, I said that was crazy, but I said, man, that, surely that's not true. And, and, and that dude that dude with the podcast out of England, the English one, Dan, Dan Hewitt, Dan Hewitt. He, he, he told me, he said, nah, dude, I know, I know his training. I personally, I guess he's over there in that same area in England. He said, nah, bro, they don't spark. They do mint work. Hmm. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> I was a Kovalev fan, right? Uh, up till you fought Dre, I'm a Dre guy, but Kovalev is a fighting man, and and if there's truth to drinking and, and being a jerk and all that, well, piss on him. But he's still a fighting man. And if you're not, you know, even at 30, what, 30, how old is it, 36, 7, 8, man? The last thing to go is the punch, bro. And if this kid, I've seen one highlight on a man, and he likes to keep that left hand to his waist. He likes to be in the middle of his hips, and that face out there, man. That, that, that man. That's I don't know. I, my prediction is if Kovalev has anything left, if he's not completely shot, he should knock this kid off, man. And I don't, I don't know nothing about him except that he don't spar, and and I seen him move in the ring, and I can't see him. It's almost like a great value of war. It <laughs> the real war. Yeah, well, we need we need Kolovit to win because if not, then all these chances will be like, you know what, we don't even got a spar, bro. It's like, we're good. Right, that's incredible, know? man. That That's incredible, man. Uh, so if Kovalev wins for the Canelo fight, think, uh, that's what they said. You think that'll be a good one? Oh. I don't even, man, that was some straight dirty stuff they did to him on this last one. I mean, that was, it looked to me like a straight setup. What's that? They'll strip him of that title. Right. You couldn't make a money fight with Canelo, but not Triple G's giving you enough money to make that fight? No, no, nah, nah, man. The cash cow gives the most amount of money. Hey, you know what the, you know what the, you know what the scuttlebutt is in the boxing circles? That, that Canelo didn't want to fight Triple G. That's the, that's, that he was ducking it. Right. Not, not that ducking him, but you know he's gonna. He wants to be in control. Right. Hey man, you're not Mayweather. You're not gonna be in control like that. But bro, I just said how G played him in the rematch down to the wire. Now Canelo holds the cards, so piss on you, man. Yeah. And and against public belief, I believe Canelo did in the second fight what he should have did in the first fight. It showed his ability. And he showed it flat-footed, walking him down. He didn't even show you your body. I'm, I'm a Canelo mark. For sure. I'm a big Canelo guy. And and I believe the guy is so fucking good that it's just amazing how little he is and competing at that at the, uh, level he is. And now I don't know him personally. I ain't never met him or none of that. I don't know none of that. I don't know his train. I don't know none of that. I just, based on the eye test, man, the guy is gifted, man, and he works hard and all that stuff. So. He, he's one of the best out there right now, and 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 it was very shaky to me, robbing of the title so you didn't give it to somebody. That's why us as boxing people hate them stupid ass titles. They don't mean nothing, man. They don't mean nothing, man. When you can just rob a guy because he's playing the game how it goes. See, you can hide under, yeah, but we told him he had a mandatory. Side, side, side. You know, like I know, I'm the guy. Without me, we have no fight. Yeah. Not dollar amount like this. Yeah. So you strip me so you can give him a plastic ass title? Well, every time I would open my mouth, and it don't seem like this is Canelo's style, but it's my style. Every time I would open my mouth, you would ask me about it, I'd say, who the fake champ? That play champ uh, over there? The guy that stole the belt? Show up, show up at press conferences. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, uh, so so <laughs> whether he wants to fight him or not, Canelo might be. Canelo seems concerned with legacy to me. Right. But Canelo seems really? like he wants to be the greatest Mexican ever put on gloves, and he's trying to prove it. But That's why, what I think. But why, but why is he talking? So my thing is, if he's ducking Triple G, I think if you're looking at it from from the three fights, because they're even talking about Spence, and, and, and you know, of course, it's just talk, but they're talking about Spence, uh, Spence and, and Canelo fight, of course, or. Uh, uh, and that's two different ends of the spectrum. Right. Not even close. Clove off or, or a little bit guy or a big big guy. Right. Or 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 Canelo or or Canelo and Triple G. For me, I think that Canelo Triple G would be 
if I'm Canelo, the fight I would fight in verse, uh, instead of uh, Spence. Why? And, because we're talking about legacy. They ain't not, he already beat him. Yeah. He already beat see, him. See, Triple G fans don't yeah. want to admit that. It wasn't even a fight, the yeah. rematch. Yeah. It wasn't even a fight. G didn't belong in the fucking ring, in my opinion. Yeah. Right. So why, why would Canelo... Because of just what I said, I think the kids really wants to be the best Mexican ever fight. That's what I think. Now, you cannot think that. And I, and right. I think, like when he fought Laura, like he had no business fighting them. I could value that opinion, and I will. If somebody said that, uh, uh, I'm all open to those opinions, fine. But I'm going to go back and say this 27-year-old kid, what is he, 28 now? This 28-year-old kid with 50 fights? Been fighting world champs and former world champs for the last fucking eight years. Yeah. I got more evidence than what what I'm telling you mm -hmm. as far as legacy and what this kid is trying to do. Yeah. Regardless of who you think he beat or didn't beat or whatever, none of that concerns me. I'm riding with him. I took the losses with him. I took the wins with him. And I see a fighter out there. And now that he got the stroke, well, yeah, now I got the stroke. Yeah, I'm, I'm committed to this now. So under your, what you just said was, why not take the G fight? You're right, because he's going to beat the shit out of G right. again. But he beat the shit out of G already. So but, he's probably but, going, but if I go beat this light heavyweight but champion. That's not, but that's not the general consensus, though. The public wants to see it. If there's a reason why the public wants to see it, it's because... Well, I don't think the public wants to see it. A lot of people like don't want to see it. Maybe no, no, Triple G, G fans, fans want to see it. <laughs> Triple G? Yeah, yeah. bro. Well, that's what I mean. You're one person who who sold on Canelo, but the rest of the, the no, rest just Triple G, G fans, fans. And, 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 okay, well, and Canelo haters. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's a big that's a big fucking chunk of the boxing. No, 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 no. absolutely. You telling me if, if if Earl Spence agrees to fight him at fifty two, that ain't a bigger fight than Triple G? It's a thousand times bigger than a Triple G to fight. A, to a boxing to a, to to the world to the boxing community. Yeah, to the world. Right. Not, but not 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 to, to not, Triple G fans. Not to right. not to not to the, the casual world. Tri no, no, Triple G fans. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not saying a Triple G fight is worthless. That ain't what I'm saying. Why? Because Triple G has fucking fans. Be they marks, casuals, and real boxing. Because real boxing guys like Triple G. I'm not saying they don't. So that's a valuable fight. It's a valuable fight. Earl Spence, Canelo, is a super fight. Now Canelo beats him. Well, I agree right with you. now. I, I agree with right. you. I'm about right I think now. I think that would be silly. There's no I think it's silly for Spence not to clean the table before right. he fights Bud, let alone that's Canelo. That's my point. Is right now the the money and the and to secure legacy is to shut that down and then move forward. To it's shut down. down. It is it's shut him. down to you. No, and to no, him no. most importantly. Well, Everybody, I'll, I'll, I'll grant that to him. Not, not true. Not true. Hey, but you know, public. that's good. No, but not, and that's we a good point, though. We'll put a poll. We'll put dude, a poll. Dude, we'll, right. put, we'll put a poll later on on Soapbox and Podcast. We can. We yeah, can. And, and, and we'll dude, see. do you realize I had people tell me Triple G won the rematch? Exactly. That's my point. A There's mark. Be, a triple G mark. It doesn't mark. matter, though. There's it does matter. Matter. To who? Dude, if I hope a dude's ass in here, right? I don't give a fuck that you don't know I did it. I don't care. On to the next. Right, but you, but you're not, you're not Canelo, and you're not. You Canelo know, used to care, right. bro. He huh? used to, he used to care. Okay. When he fought Lara, Canelo's the man, not Triple G, bro. He cared about what the boxing fans wanted, but when he fought Lara, and he understood, it don't matter what you do, the ones that hate you are gonna hate you regardless. Right. So you know what? To hell with them. So does Canelo care about legacy? Yeah, absolutely. That's all, that's, all that's all he cares about. That's all he cares about. So that's, that's got to be what he cares so, about. Because so, so, he, he no. certainly ain't chasing the money. <laughs> asterisk, there's always going to be that asterisk with him and. Uh, how? It could be like, with him and Laura. It just, don't matter. Just asterisk, how? Like, just like just the only like, asterisk he just, has is Floyd. Just see? like, just like. Uh, how you got an asterisk from a guy who got his ass kicked? That's bullshit. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's bullshit. He, he, because it could be arguable. I'm, I'm, no, it's not. I, I, it's absolutely. not. Absolutely. I'm, I, you I might give Triple G. I if you've seen I more think, than two rounds for Triple G in that rematch, I think, then I don't care what you say. I think. I think Canelo, that dominant. I think. I think Canelo won the first. I mean, the second fight. I no, think, he kicked I, his I, ass in the second. It wasn't even a fight. No, no. Oh, tell right. the truth. Sure. Okay. Because I, I, I easily say G won the first one. I right. said that. Right. G won the first. I say if I call it a draw, I'm lying because I think when Canelo quit fighting the way he was. G came in and cleaned it up, and guess what? I'm a Canelo fan. I'm telling you, Triple G won that fight by a round. And that's my point. My point is, 
uh, as far as as, he, as as a as a boxer and as a man, especially with the legacy and him being Mexican. If you look at it like that, if you look, okay, I won, I kicked his ass the, the, the second fight, which he did. He very dominant, and he boxed, he boxed his style, and did, he did everything he should have done. No, first no, fight. no, he fought Triple G's style yeah. and kicked well, his ass. He did well, box. When I say his style, I'm saying Mexican style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he fought that man like he said, I'm going to fight this but, man. But, but, he, I, in my eyes, he lost the first fight. It, it was too. still a draw, it was, but it was still, officially it was a draw. So that's it's, it's a tradition business, and it, and it's tradition. It's it's part of the culture. Bro, that would, would be like Marquez Pacquiao when so, he bro, knocked him out. It's over. Look, look, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. He was well, he won fight. Yeah, but who had the defining, and that's it. It's over. Right, but there ain't no question. Well, not only that, they fought because that's, they both was top rank and they wouldn't fight nobody. Right, but then and he knocked him out. Let me kill this. Let me kill this. He wants a third fight to prove my point, and I'm not being slick. I want you to think like I'm saying. He wants a third fight with two guys. One won a dominant fight and the first one was a drum. How aren't you just a fan and just want your guy to get another chance? No, no I'm looking at it. I'm no, no, seriously. I'm looking at it from a business. I'm looking at it from a legacy and I'm looking at it to, to business. From legacy, you can't be looking at it because yeah, we know what it's happened. Be a draw. Wait, what did you say? Legacy, we oh, know right. what happened. He walked through Triple G. Yeah. In his style of fighting and backed that boy up and he couldn't fight back was... And you know another one every round, except maybe two. You know how I know. I, you know how I know it's an issue, and it's and it's uh, it's it's because there's guys who share your opinion because they're triple G guys, bro. There's because it's not it's not dying. It's going to it's going to continue to be talked about, and there'll definitely be and there'll definitely be a. a but say this, fight. say this, because the zones trying to save their company and and bucking up and trying to salvage with an old guy no because fight. he's got a fan base. So they trying to they pumping him up against a guy he should be so they can. Get a third fight with uh, Canelo to salvage all the losing they doing on their app. That's all that is. You gotta look at it like this. I'm talking. I can talk that business talk with you. Listen, does it make business sense for him to fight Triple G? Yeah, Absolutely. especially depending on who for the zone. Yeah. If you the zone guy, what well, for the fighters too? They don't, that's a, if you Triple G, he's, man. he's already got his money, and there ain't no pay per view money. So it's not like he's going to get more money. If anything, he's a big name, so he's got to take less. What I'm saying is I don't fault Canelo for saying, you fucking haters ain't happy anyway. I want this dude's ass. And he made it hard to make the rematch. Fuck you, piss ain't. Let me go on to the next thing. Only guys who disagree with that is if you don't like Canelo okay. and you're a Triple G guy. That's it. The Zone wants that fight. Why? Try to salvage their shit. G wants that fight. Why? It's a payday before I retire. And Listen, Ooh, don't pretend, don't pretend Triple G is the legacy fight, bro. You 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 thoroughly ass whooped him, and you got a gift in a draw, because I thought I'm telling you G when won the first fight. I'm telling you. So I'm not I'm not arguing that. So Canelo in no way, shape, or form needs Triple G. Canelo in way no, yeah. Won a close fight that they called a draw that I'm saying your guy won by a round and won a thorough ass with him. It's answer. This guy can't fight my guy, and my guy's a midget, and whooped your ass. So, if it's legacy, this is all my, and, and I'm, and I'm saying, what? I'm saying I'm a Canelo mark. I'm telling you, I'm a Canelo fan. But before that, I'm a boxing guy with integrity, and I'm telling you, Triple G, he don't need Triple G for legacy. I walk through this guy. Now, he goes up there and whoops an old Kovalev, which is a dangerous fight, that adds to legacy. He catches this young superstar, Spence, which if I'm Spence guy and I'm a Spence fan, he's a Texan. Uh, Spence, Spence hold that down the road yeah. when we get the middleweight. Because we got the big bud fight, we got we got the clean BBC out, we got some fights over here. Man, uh, Earl could go whoop Danny Garcia still, he could go whoop all these different guys and, and clear the table. We said that. Triple G's only leg to stand on is his fans. <laughs> his fans want him to fight. And that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't want the fight. And I'm not even gonna say he ain't live. I think long as Canelo, so you don't think long as Triple G's punching, so he's a live dog. So you don't think you don't think a Triple G, you don't think a, the third fight would, would be entertaining, would be a great fight. Yeah, I think I, for me, because I'm a Canelo guy, I think we ass with him. Yeah, walk through him. We probably knock him out this time. That's what I think. But that's my fanship sliding in there. But. Double that with my boxing IQ and understanding 
It's apples and fucking oranges. Which is why it was so depressing when Triple G won the first fight in my eyes. Because Canelo, you really gave this dude too much fucking credit, bro. Because you you box circles around this guy for four rounds and then quit. Did, 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 wasn't there a rumor that Canelo was hurt in that first fight? Well, he did switch the gloves. Yeah. You know. Oh, he, and I didn't know that going in. Yeah. And and now. Yeah, he had a broken hand or something, right? Yeah, because he, he switched those. I was like, wait, well, why is he using uh, winning gloves, I believe? Yeah. And, 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 you know, he's always uh, uh, been a grant guy. Mm -hmm. And so that's telltale sign that something ain't right. But would I watch the Triple G? Yeah, I'm a boxing guy. Right, Dude, I'm a Triple G. I watched plenty of Triple G's fight. He's an entertainer. He's a brawler. I, man, he just never fought nobody. Man, you can't even name five. You can't even name five middleweights, true middleweights, Triple G beat. Name them. He's got the list right here. He's like, <laughs> he did. The truth is, they was all blown up well the way uh, uh, Smart. And when he had the chance for Legacy to fight Andre Ward, he wants no parts of it. Canelo is a five foot eight, probably seven guy that doesn't belong with these big guys statually. And it's all boxing, it's all ability. The reason why he nullifies these guys. That's what's amazing about it. Whether you think he looks white or not, I don't give a shit. Because that seems like to be a big problem, too. The kid looks Irish. He's Mexican. You know, me and Coach talk about this all the time. I pick and say, yeah, that's my Irish guy, too. He's a Mexican, bro, through and through. Yeah. So people's going to find something not to like about this guy. When I sit back and, and think about how long ago it was that this kid fought Sugar Shane Mosley, how long ago it was he fought the Hatton guy? How long ago it was he fought uh, all these guys? Trout, yeah. Trout, all this dude. This dude is special, bro. Yeah. Now. He's a decent fighter. Will he? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. See, see and that don't, that don't make me mad because I believe Triple G fans think that. I believe they think. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm not a fan of me, bro. Not saying, I'm not, I'm not, when I'm I say not, Triple G I'm, fan, I'm not saying you, right. because you could be a fan of Triple G. I'm a fan of Triple G, bro. I'm not sold on any of them. I but don't talk about, yeah. don't talk about boxing, bro. The boxing understanding is two different fucking things, bro. And the thing about it is, when you see all the naysayers, and this guy's chasing legacy, and this guy's beating guys way better than him. This guy took Floyd Mayweather, bro, at 20, what, three? He was like a baby, 23 years old, bro, you know what? That kid didn't give a shit, man. Make the fight, I'm going to win. And the fact that he lost the fight and still excelled at this level lets you know, he said, he got me. This is why he got me. A, B, C, and D. I'll never let that shit happen again, right? Same thing with the Triple G fight. God damn it, I let that do. Now, he could easily, Canelo ain't lying to himself if after that first one, he said, no, nah, we won that fight, but just barely. That's, that's a competitive nature. He can say that. But he's got to say this part, but I did A, B, and C. Let me go back to the gym, make that fight again, and see what happens. And he went and did it. This guy's, this guy's, this guy's doing some tremendous shit, bro. And and it's like, it's almost like he's a, uh, he's such a uh, divine. Like you either yes or no. There's no in between with this kid. You either hate this kid or like this kid. And the hate kid comes from to me. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I think it's his, I think it's mostly Hispanics or Mexican people who have the the royalty. The the Julio Cesar Chavez thing in their mind to where, but you to me you you're not knocking Julio Cesar Chavez to say how great this kid is. But I'm not looking at it as a Mexican guy who wants a guy to stand there and brawl and, and you know what I'm saying. So to me. Mexicans are very divided on this kid. Very divided on this kid. They either like him or think he, he's, a, he's a seller. Because, because we're not, because I'll we're tell not, you why. We're not divided on Ruiz. Yeah. Exactly. Right? There's, There's two point. Mexican guys. Right. Two Mexican guys. Am I on to someone? No. Am I way yeah. off? Real simple. Why in one fight does Ruiz capture the whole Mexican right. community? He's humble. Yeah. He's approachable. Yeah. And, I and Canelo wants to what, what, what Canelo did was... He he took all that negative energy from the haters and doesn't know how to separate. And so now everybody thinks he's arrogant. Everybody thinks he's this. When the reporter comes up to him at, at the at the so baptism I mean, and yeah, says, I don't know who invited you, this, that, and the other. That's why people don't like him. And then, but then at the same time, that's why people love Ruiz. 
man, that guy starts talking, he spews humbleness, yeah. bro. And so you gotta love uh, that. Now check this out. I don't speak Spanish. I've never heard, I, I can't tell you nothing Canelo's ever said publicly outside of 24-7, and he seems humble on 24-7. So in the Hispanic media, he's arrogant. Arrogant. No, well, that makes sense. That makes all the sense in the world. They, they think he ain't, he ain't being appreciative mm -hmm. of his value, people's what, value. What, what, what I appreciate about Canelo is you know, going back talking about the loss to Mayweather. You know, that could have been, that was a huge defining moment in his career because I think back and look at another uh, Mexican, well, Canelo's Mexican, but I look at a, a Mexican American fighter who took on a big fight early in his career, lost, and that sort of put him in a, in a different path in his career. That's Fernand, uh, Fernando Vargas. Mm -hmm. When he took his loss, I'm a Vargas more. Yeah, I, 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 I literally did. I, I'm a huge fan of Vargas, uh, Vargas, but when he took that loss, ain't nothing humble about him. Nothing. He was never humble about nothing. He, well, that also, that, and that he was. Remember, I always told you, people like bad guys, but they gotta have a story. And so he had a story too. You know, growing up in the hood and then being being fucking uh, uh, De La Hoya giving him the cold shoulder, and so that's why people bought him into his story because he he did have an attitude. He wasn't humble, but that's because his story lined up with that. We were rooting for him. We wanted him to win because he had he came from such a. Humble. So, so what? Uh, Canelo's a rich kid? Nah, Canelo's just no, but 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 he was protected. Yeah. You know, uh, he was groomed. Groomed. He's been groomed for all this. Yeah, and he's, 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 he's supposed to be a prodigy. And, and, and nobody uh, groomed Ruiz. Nobody's nah. looking out for his best interest. Then he comes out and knocks out the heavyweight champ, and then he's humble like that. That's why. Like man, bro, just be very careful. Don't yeah. don't cross over. Don't cross over. Because you don't lose know it. what you don't know. Yeah, and you might step into something. And you're like, oh shit. I wish you would have been like, I'm not even gonna touch that money right. till I beat him in the rematch. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Because right. uh, it, 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 they stacking all the deck against you because you wasn't supposed to whoop him. Yeah. So I, I like I like Canelo for that reason. He took that loss and took the you know against uh, arguably the best fighter of, of this generation and came back and had run the table. Well, yeah. except for the, the first triple two, but has run the table with with everyone else and fighting everyone. And he hasn't left anyone. He he's fought all the and maybe and maybe and maybe and I and I and so, so I admit to, that. to that credit, he, he's, a, he's a great fighter. Absolutely, I admit that that I'm I'm more so looking at the uh, boxing than the culture and shit. Yeah, absolutely, because he ain't my culture. Hell, he ain't even American. And I'm rooting for him like a big dog because I see the boxing there. And that's what I see. I see the ability there. And I'm like, if you denying the ability, man, I don't give a shit what you're talking about, man. Because this guy is special. This guy is fucking special, bro. And you would think him being a Mexican only increases in this sport, right? This ain't basketball or... or, or, or Oh, he's this like is the, the next best thing to soccer, right? Mm -hmm. With the Hispanic people. He's like the, he's like the LeBron James. He's the great, you know, Canelo. You know, the nah, best, man, like, this dude's great, bro. The LeBron best, James took the best the, in this era, and he's beating everyone just like LeBron. Nah, LeBron James, man, he's the great. nah, that's all shit. But, I know. Well, then he got doing. Michael Jordan, and then nah. you know Julio Cesar Chavez. Well, especially not the I just totally disagree with Floyd Mayweather, and I understand that that that. Chavez is Mexican Jesus, I understand that. <laughs> but when I look at Chavez's yeah. ability, when I look at Chavez's ability, and I look at this kid's ability, now if you don't see the difference, man, now we gotta see how his story ends. Yeah. We know how Chavez ends. We know Chavez fought a zillion people and knocked them all out. Even when he's losing, he knocks you out. Listen, I understand, I value the dude. Because there was a point when I didn't value, and then I got educated on him, and I said, oh, shit, I just, I just missed the boat. So now I'm looking at him going, damn. Like, the most amazing fight for me, Chavez, like, I look at the Chavez-Taylor thing yeah. completely different. Taylor was special, bro. That's the fastest fight i ever seen in my life. I've never seen nobody with that kind of hand speed, that movement, that, that, all that fluidity. And Chavez chopped this fucker down, bro. Constantly. And yeah, it ended great at the wire. And <laughs> finally he did it. But I don't look at it as they robbed Taylor from from a great win. I look at it as Chavez proved himself for 12 rounds. So I look at it completely different. I'm like, and, and plus we know how Taylor ended up yeah. tragically 
taking too much. Nobody was protecting him like they should have been because if you go watch that with an un, 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 uh, kid's eye, you see Chavez is battering that kid from round one, bro. Even though Taylor is, 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 is shining, he's shoe shining, he's landing shots and moving and pretty. He's going pretty. But it, it's like every time Chavez hit him, man, that, you know, it's like when they show uh, Frazier hit, uh, Foreman hitting that bag, boom. Yeah. Man, that little guy was chopping and chopping. And you, and then if you go back and watch it and just look at Taylor's face, he consistently was getting his ass beat and it just went to the wire. So, hey, Chavez didn't really suffer too much, did he? No. I, mean, I was just thinking about it right now. You've never know? seen him beat up and all bloody no, up? I mean, he, maybe he the... The De La Hoya Even his nose didn't get messed up until right there at the end, right? Yeah. He looked like Chavez the whole time. I mean, he's walking around with all cylinders, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Huh. That's something that he's uh, said about him. Right. That's great. What, uh, who you got to look at the yard? Uh, Man, I, I hate making these, these things because I'm not educated on a yard kid enough, right? So if I say Kovalev wins and yard shows his ass, right, then... When it ain't that, I'm telling you going in, I don't know nothing about the yard kid. Uh, if, if there's any truth to him not being, uh, if there's any truth to him uh, not sparring, I mean, that's insane, bro. That's like that's like not running, you know. So he can't be sharp enough from 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 some some damn mitts coming at him as what, as what Kovalev's going to throw at him. So... Conventional wisdom, let me say that, so I have an out when it goes back. <laughs> Conventional wisdom, Kovalev chops him down and knocks him out. Of course, Kovalev's older. If there's any truth to his alcohol problems and all, he don't seem like a likable guy. I heard he, well, I ain't going to talk about what I heard because I can't prove it, but uh, Kovalev, I think, is the safe pick. Uh, tonight. Yeah, that's what I pick. I go with Coach. Fuck it, I go with Yard. Mm. Uh, Robert went with Yard. I go with Yard. I say, uh, and I'm not doing it under uh, a favoritism or, or or I just rooting for. No, no, I just know it. This kid, I seen him. I seen a highlight. I've been watching Cole there, and if there's truth to this kid not far, man, he might be in a rough ass fight, man. Okay, Real fast. Yeah, I'll be Yard under six. He's young, he's a killer, we'll see. Yeah. Don't make him a break. If it goes past six, Kobo wins. It's like, it'll it'll make him that's your out. Yeah, yeah that's my out. Six. Got it. That's it. Got it. They're fighting in Russia, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. In Russia. He's getting a decision. Yeah. He's got to go out there and knock him out. Two wins. Well, I'll tell you, man, go, go look back at the Outside of that first Alvarez fight and the second Ward fight, Kobo hadn't lost many rounds, bro, let alone uh, fights, you know. Uh, I thought he won the I'm a, Andre Ward Mark, bro, and Copley won that fight by round. Man. Oh, to me, the first one. Copley's a award, award mark. Uh, I like, I like, and I like educated like fight. You said someone else. Uh, it was Canelo Ward and uh, right now. No, you said yeah. You said someone else. Uh, I think, I think, I think, I think between Bud, Canelo, and uh, uh, Spence. That's the best thing going in boxing. My, my, advice, Russian kid. my advice for Yard, uh, since since he's not doing any sparring for this fight, is go back and study the film at uh, uh, Rocky IV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How to beat a Russian in Russia. Exactly. <laughs> well, fellas, we've been, man, we're going good time in here, man. Top, fight, top three fighters ever. Ever. Your favorite? Uh, yeah. I would say, I don't, not who's the best. Right, right, who's right. Who's my favorite? Outside the ring, Muhammad Ali. Okay. Uh, inside the ring, I would go with uh, Salvador Sanchez. Uh, you know, I'm so biased. And uh, who does that? Who is he? He's a chocolate. That's it. It's blasphemy for me not to even say oh, that. Like, right, right. 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 Yeah, you lose points. <laughs> yeah. You say your shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, top three fighters right now. Active fighters. Right now. Like? Wow. I, I'm... Look, I used, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be protective of the cash cow because that's what controls that table where I'm at, right? But now it's like I'm, I'm becoming just a fan, bro. Mm -hmm. And it's like obviously I want Ruiz to win, but hey, man, if if Joshua's a better fighter, then let Joshua win. Like so, 
right now just who who I want to see. Well, shit. I, obviously, I want to number one right now. I want to see that Andy Ruiz. Yeah, right. That if he wins that, automatic favorite right now. Right, right, you know? right. And then second to him, obviously Canelo. Canelo makes that table, my environment work. Right. He's that shark, and I'm that little fish on the bottom. Right. Mm. He eats, I eat. Yeah. You know? Like Tyson and Vegas, everything right. underneath yep. you. Right. Absolutely. And then, you know, it's it's crazy as a, but I like Wilder. I just I just like Wilder. You like Wilder. Yeah, bro. And I'm wrong with that. So, so I'm trying to come up with our end of the end of the thing. I'll, I'll write some shit down. I always forget. All right. So that's your top three. Ever top three. Now, last question. The best heavyweight on earth is who? The best heavyweight mm -hmm. in the world right now is who? Right now, damn, bro, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Fury. Okay. Yeah. Best, let's say middleweight in the world right now. Canelo. And the best welterweight. Ooh. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shoot with uh, Spence. Yeah. Oh, that's a general consensus. I, I, I can't argue none of that shit, man. Yeah. Good Mine man. is Anthony uh, Joshua heavyweight. Did he say it? <laughs> you just play it, right? Okay, you just play it. <laughs> like, wait, nah. <laughs> what can you do? Because he was so serious, I was like, wait, nah. He's, he's, he's playing, right? Well, um, Instagram, Facebook. Why well, I appreciate you, brother, man. This was a great yeah. it flowed like it was nothing, man. Yeah, uh, we finally got the audio. We got Wi-Fi, so we're excited. Joe. All, no thanks all to Joe. Troubles, all your troubles are... Uh, uh, at ease now, so now you can sit back and enjoy the show with a cup of coffee early in the morning. There you go. Uh, Facebook Instagram is Coach Derek, Man It Fresh. Our boy Juan with Pablo. Well, I'm, I'm, I can't say his last name, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a butcher. Where, uh, where, where can they go find you at? Uh, uh, on Instagram is uh, Pueblo Boxing, okay. uh, on all social media, and then Solo Boxing uh, is the, the website, soloboxing.com. Soloboxing.com. Y'all go check them out. Support them. He's doing a lot for the community. The people's boxing. Yeah. Pueblo Boxing, man. I love that. Pueblo Boxing. The people's boxing. Right. That's all right, man. We'll catch y'all next week.